Second and goal, ball at the seven. Miller, Faye Patter, incomplete. Intended receiver was Sean Collins, covered that time by Don Griffin. And Don Griffin's the strong link in that defensive backfield for the 49ers, and not probably the guy you really want to test on a regular basis. Why not go back to Mark Lee? Fine pass by Chris Miller. It's right on the money. But that's why Don Griffin is so highly thought of in this league. He's, a, he's, a, he's an acrobat. The guy can run like a deer, and he's an acrobat. Atlanta, not where they'd like to be inside the 20. You ideally, go ahead, Randy. You ideally want to be about double that, about 60% inside the 20, scoring touchdowns. Third and goal. And again, rising touchdown, Atlanta. A seven-yard pass play from Chris Miller to Andre Risen, and the Falcons striking quick and early. Well, they tested Don Griffin on that other side. They decided, what the heck, let's see if Ryzen can beat Todd Bowles here, number 22. And this is a mismatch. Bowles is behind from the very start, and from a speed factor, he can't hang with Andre Ryzen. And Norm Johnson with 10-15 left in the first quarter of play as the Falcons out in front by 14. How much insulation do you have in your attic? Three inches? Six inches? Well, the Department of Energy recommends R38 for most American homes, which is equivalent to a foot of Owens Corning. There's one battery that backs you with free jump start service anywhere for any reason. Die hard. I can't believe I left my lights on. Sears Die Hard. More power when you need it most. Who's gonna back you better than Sears? The Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate. The optimism that Chris Miller expressed early on, well founded so far, 14-0. Chris Miller, first quarter action, 4-5. 114 yards, two touchdowns, and another milestone. And it puts him in some elite company here. 10,000 yards. Look at those names he's up there with. He'll pass for a lot more, ladies and gentlemen, if the Atlanta Falcons stay with this red gun offense for long. He is a very accurate and strong passer. Norm Johnson with a high short one taken at the 10 by Dexter Carter. And Carter spun around, stalled. Finally dropped at about the 26, make that the 24-yard line. Stopped by Tracy Eaton. So San Francisco will try to get untracked offensively as you take a look at the back of head coach George Seifert in his third year. And so far, the Atlanta Falcons have come into this game, and if the, the game itself and the win is a prize, they've grabbed the other team by the and said, we're going to take this. You have no business to win this. And so far, the 49ers have kind of sat back and said, oh, okay, fine. First and 10 from the 24, Keith Henderson, the ball carrier. And Henderson ahead for about five, six yards. Stopped by Jesse Tuggle. Five plays covering 49 yards. A buck 30 just about off the clock. And Chris Miller, seven-yard pass to Andre Risen. As a matter of fact, coming into the game, folks were asking why Andre Risen was not more involved in the offensive scheme of things. Boy, that's changing quickly here. Well, it will be, especially with the four wide, the four wide receivers that head coach George Seifert's going to see his defense challenge with all day long. Second and four for San Fran. And the pitch to Henderson. And Henderson picks up two. Rick Bryan, Tim Green doing a nice job. Well, the Niners here are trying to prove the point that we're not panicking, we're not pressing, we're down by two touchdowns, so we'll just run the ball for a couple times. But if they're going to get back into this football game and get back close to Atlanta again, they're going to have to press their wide receivers up in the 15 to 20-yard area down the field. They've been running them all year long in the 5 to 7-yard area and hitting them and dinking them. They've got to get down the field to get down quick. Third and three. 
Bradman and Henderson, the backs. Got the 11 up look. He's got the 49ers going for a timeout, it would appear. And we'll take the break as well. Atlanta Falcons on top by 14. The reinvention of the Ford Escort added a new level of design and performance to small cars. And now, we've added a new, more sophisticated Ford Escort. Introducing the new four-door Ford Escort LX Sedan, a car designed to offer exceptional value and quality, and even the power of the GT, but with a style all its own. Have you wanted a style all your own? Have you driven a Ford lately? This is perfect. It all makes sense. I buy toys for my son. I give them to my son. He breaks them. That's his role. Everybody needs a role. That's his role. It's all part of the natural order of things. Now, when my father bought a toy, it never broke. How come? He never let me touch it. Relax. You're among friends. Levi's 100% cotton dockers. It was a stupid mistake, but I was in a hurry. So when I finally realized my briefcase was gone, I knew I'd never find it. Worse, my wallet and cash, credit cards, and checkbook were in it, and I was out of state. Oh, for a friendly face. Thank goodness I bank at First Interstate. And thank goodness for Keith Frank. He canceled my credit cards so no one could use them, got me cash, and treated me like I was banking at home. Now that's extra mile service. If you want extra mile service, come to First Interstate Bank. We go the extra mile for you, guaranteed. Spend an evening at the Chop Shop as the Braves fight to expand their two-to-one lead over the Pirates. It's Tomahawk Frenzy and the Battles of October tonight. Atlanta made a good call on that last play, calling a timeout. Look at this. Rice and Taylor at the bottom of the screen. Sherrard at the top. Atlanta was in a man situation in a third and three. If they'd have gone on with this, this was a big play waiting to happen. So an alert call by Jerry Glanville and company. Third and three. Same formation, different defense. Yum, with time. Throws it incomplete. Intended receiver was John Taylor. Covering that time was William Evers. And Evers, week before last, burned badly against the Saints. But he was put in some situations, James, he really shouldn't have been put in. I mean, he was a young guy, had just gotten there. If you're going to put your good wide receivers inside you've got to put your good cover guys inside you don't put a brand new man inside like that like they did to uh, to Evers there against Turner for New Orleans two weeks ago on to punt for San Francisco Joe Prokop sixth year player out of Cal Poly Pomona back deep Deion Sanders Prokop decent kick Sanders fair calling it Loses the handle, but does recover. And Deion Sanders with a unique way of signaling a fair catch. And we saw that cause him some problems earlier in the season against Kansas City. And if he had to do it over again, James, I believe he would not have fair, fair caught that only because there was no one within 10 yards of him when he fair caught it. There's his little sh personal flair of a fair catch, he calls. But the ball floats out a little bit. Remember, Prokop's a left-footed kicker. Right-footed kickers, the balls tend to go from right to left. Left-footed kicker, ball goes from left to right, and he misjudged that kick. Mm -hmm. So the Falcons, with 8.25 left in the first quarter play, open up from their own 27, first and 10. <laughs> Miller to Haynes, complete. Michael Haynes, the receiver, Tackled by Don Griffin, a five-yard pickup on that pass play. And for those of you who want to keep abreast of the baseball score, we will be doing that throughout the day. The American League Championship Series taking place in Minnesota. Right now out in front, one to nothing over Toronto. And we'll keep you updated throughout the day on that series. And Atlanta's staying in this red gun offense with their four wide receivers, which is really spreading the 49ers out and forcing them to bring Haley and Harris from different positions on the field. Harris now is lined up as an inside linebacker. Chris Miller, 
out of the shotgun on second and five. Inside handoff to Pegram, and Pegram spins his way and gets up about a yard and a half shy of what's needed for the first down. We'll call it a four-yard gain. We'll bring up a third and one. And Jerry Rice on the phone upstairs, no doubt, to offensive coordinator Mike Holmgren, trying to figure out a way. You know, Mike, how do I get open downfield? You haven't thrown me the ball for a while. I've been a little frustrated. Exactly how is it you want me to get down the field and get open? Mike Holmgren, the gentleman there in the middle next to the bar in the window. From the 35, third and one. Ryzen in motion. Pigram has the first down. Tripped up by Johnny Jackson after picking up seven yards for the first down. Eric Pegram, our rookie out of North Texas State, and Randy, when we talked with him yesterday, it was so nice just to see a fresh, wide-eyed approach to the game. Oh, exactly, but, you know, this is a guy, Mike Ken says, he's the guy we want to get the ball in his hands. Now, watch all the 49er linemen here, 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 and here. They go upfield. We talk about the red gun spreading people out. Watch it spread this defense out, and it frees up a quick, darting Eric Pegram. from the 43. Miller with time. Complete to Pritchard, the rookie. And Pritchard, about four yards shy of the first down marker. A seven-yard pickup, we'll call it. Let's check back in New York with Greg Gumbel. LJB at the Sky Dome in Toronto. First inning, Tom Candy out. His knuckler didn't knuckle quite right, and Kirby Puckett hits his second home run in two games. A two-out solo shot in the first, and the Twins lead the Blue Jays 1-0. JB? All right, Greg, and Minnesota, boy. Talk about an impressive season they've had, and they're continuing it in the postseason. Second and three from the 49. Slips a tackle. And Pegram finally brought down by Bill Romanowski. There's a flag down on the field, James. And that's against Atlanta. Flag thrown on the near side of the field. A little procedure. I think it might be too many, not enough guys lined up on the line of scrimmage with all those wide receivers spread out all over the place. Illegal motion, number 35, offense, five yards, second down. And that's the rookie out of Colorado, Mike Pritchard. Pritchard has really turned himself into a very decent pro receiver. He's a lucky learning young wide receivers, too, because he has guys like Andre Risen, Michael Haynes, Sean Collins to learn from. Second and nine for Atlanta. Ball back at the 44. And the option goes to Pegram. And San Fran, nice job. Charles Haley stopped him after only regaining two yards. Watch Charles Haley come out from way out in here. You'll see Charles Haley in this area. He's going to be coming on this option. Watch the speed and the ability of a Charles Haley. Gets caught inside, but he's able to recover the ground on a running back much faster than him. And Charles is the guy that for his first couple years was kind of lost. At, was he an end? Was he a linebacker? Now they've quit fighting it. Now he's one of each. He's a player. Third and seven. Complete ball in and out of the hands of Michael Haynes. A classic case where coaches will tell you to look the ball in before deciding to make your move. And for the 49ers to really reassert themselves in this game, it's got to be done by this defensive team in the 49ers. They've got to shut the Falcons down if they want to continue to be effective. Scott Bullhead going to punt. Back deep, John Taylor for the 49ers. Taylor, that's a take a bounce from 
his own 10. effort on the part of Taylor to make something out of nothing, a 44-yard punt, nine-yard return. Listen, someone in a truck should be just as comfortable as someone in a car. So our newly designed 92 Ford full-size pickup has a totally new interior. And they're the only full-size pickups that offer power lumbar seats. Sure, we build tough trucks. We also build in a lot of comfort. Hmm. More people are driving the best-built, best-selling American trucks than ever before. It's football time. Your ball, Joe. I'm hurting, Jimmy. I did it. You can do it. This isn't tennis. This is football pain. My doc says ibuprofen for body pain. The medicine in Nuprin. My trainer, same thing. So Nuprin. Nuprin. Nuprin with Nuprin. Strong stuff. Just takes one. Cheer up, Joe. There's always tennis. Yeah, Jimmy? You think I'm old enough? <laughs> for back joint or muscle pain. Nuprin. Nuprin. With Nuprin. The body pain medicine. Gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome. That being so stated, on to the job at hand. Please take note, listen carefully. To begin... Every one of these executives flew to this important business meeting on a different airline, sampling various meals, beverages, onboard services, and other amenities. Can you find the one executive that flew here on Alaska Airlines? Plus, plus six, five. Divide the whole quantity by... You're watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. 66,000 on hand here at Candlestick, and the Falcons have been able to keep them out of the action for the most part here in the first quarter, leading it 14 to nothing thanks to two touchdown passes from Chris Miller, one to Andre Rise and the other to Michael Haynes as you take a look at Steve Young, Jerry Rice and company. Look for the matchup out on the corners. McKayer and McKayer and uh, Neon Dion on the corners against Taylor and Rice. Young with three wide receivers in this set. Back to pass. With time to Taylor. And it's intercepted by Scott Case. Now, did he scoop it up off the ground? No, in fact, it's an interception. Down by contact. So Scott Case swipes this one from Steve Young. And that's the fifth interception thrown this season by Young. And Case, Case on that play was just playing center field. You can see him top of the screen. He's playing the center fielder. Steve Young's looking right at John Taylor. Case steps right in front of it. That was one Steve Young gave away not only by the throw, but also by his direction. He looked at John Taylor the entire way, and a veteran like Case will read his eyes every time. First pick of the season for Scott Case. So the Falcons with excellent field position again. Ball at the 38 of San Francisco, 350. Left in the first quarter play. Incomplete. Chris Miller had it right there in the hands of Sean Collins. And again, after one up in Toronto, thanks to a Kirby Puckett home run, Minnesota on top of Toronto, one zip. That bullpen of the Minnesota Twins, you've got to get closer, stay close to them. You get to about the sixth, seventh, eighth inning, you're a dead duck if you're behind because they can close the door. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Puckett found a knuckleball from Candiata he liked. Eric Pegram, the lone back for the Falcons on second and ten. Pegram looking for a hole, slips and slides. Boy, he does a nice job of picking his holes. Randy, he's so small, he scoots ahead for five yards at time, 5'9", 188. He talked to us about who his favorite running back is. Well, his guy is Tony Dorsett. So it's not anybody that plays now. It's somebody that I used to play. I emulated him as a kid, emulated him in high school. And he's a guy I would like to eventually learn how to run like. And he'll get plenty of chance here today. It seems Jerry Glanville is committed to this red gun and to keep the 49er rush honest. They'll use multiple times of Pegram and draws and quick hitting plays to keep that rush off Miller. Third and six from the 34. And Miller gets 
it away to rise and complete. And it looks like he has more than enough for the first down. And Randy, it looked like Don Griffin had the blitz on that time, but Miller was able to escape. Well, they were blitzing Don Griffin. He's rising right here. He's going to go over there and then come all the way back across the field. But they blitzed Don Griffin inside, inside of Tim Harris. They put lots of pressure on him, but Miller kept his cool and threw this ball literally right between Don Griffin's arms. So it's first and 10 at the 25 of San Fran. Mike Rozier, the back end now in place of Pegram. Miller, quick pass to Sean Collins, and Collins has it complete. About a nine-yard pickup. So to bring up a second and one for Atlanta. Kevin Lewis, the cover man that time. And Jerry Glanville frequently doesn't let his team know what the game plan is, Randy. Maybe the earliest the night before, oftentimes, Day of the game. Mm -hmm. They get him out here day of the game. He says, hey, we run the red gun. We run the regular offense. We run the short yardage. We do everything all week long. And then Jerry tells us on Sunday mornings who's going to start and what kind of game plan we got to go with. Second and one from the 15 of San Francisco. 142 left in the first quarter of play. On the ground and Chafee. Moves it ahead near the 10. George Seifer, you can tell by the body language right there, not a happy camper. His team right now is physically having this game dictated to them by the offensive line of the Atlanta Falcons. Let's take a look at today's inactives. Quarterback Brett Favre, Bobby Butler for Atlanta, Kevin Fagan, and Michael Walter for San Francisco. It was a first down, so it's first and goal for Atlanta. Ball at the 10 of San Francisco. Oh, nearly a great catch as Michael Haynes actually slipped going down but had the presence of mind to keep his eyes on the ball. And what we're seeing Atlanta do here, Atlanta is stretching the 49er defense out and they're attacking the cornerbacks of San Francisco, getting them these quick hitches, these quick passes. Look at the way the defense is spread out. Look how many DBs all the way out here, and they're going to attack the cornerback right down there at the bottom and go after him. He misses the tackle. If the ball gets there, it's six points. Just barely slipped right there off the third baseline. Pegram back in. Miller out of the shotgun. Red gun formation, second and goal. Slot receivers are very important in the red zone for this offense. And it goes to Pegram, and Pegram has nowhere to go. So Atlanta tried to get a little cute. Instead, loses two yards on the play. I can never figure out why teams want to do that. It seems like invariably early in football games, offenses get down. They get down there with quick passing and good crisp running. Then they do something cute when they get close to the goal line, where if something goes wrong, you almost slit your wrist letting a score get away. I would think Atlanta's going to let this clock run all the way out so they can kick this field goal out of the outfield area, Candlestick, instead of off this bad area here by the infield. And that looks to be it exactly. So that's the end of the first quarter here at Candlestick Park. And the Falcons lead the 49ers by 14. Monday. Rick? Is this Maggie's ex-lover? I detect a note of jealousy, Fleischman. Jealous me of a dog? You decide. Is this Rick? Northern Exposure, Monday. Motorcraft Energy Conserving Oil can help reduce fuel consumption. It can also reduce traffic. Motorcraft Quality Parts. Peace of mind from Ford. Inside your smooth running engine is a torture chamber. And under these grueling conditions, only one leading motor oil meets the world's toughest requirements for viscosity breakdown. Castrol, the only leading motor oil that provides maximum protection against viscosity and thermal breakdown. So use Castrol. Why make things tougher on your engine? Castrol, engineered for today's smaller cars. Now get a free officially licensed NFL team hat when you buy a case of Castrol GTX.
the Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. Allstate Life. Financial strength you can count on. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? Levi's Dockers. Relax, you're among friends. And by O'Doul's from Anheuser-Busch. Premium beer taste without the alcohol. Certainly a sight very familiar to most. Alcatraz in the middle of San Francisco Bay here. Gorgeous afternoon, as I mentioned, here in San Francisco. 78 degrees and a gorgeous afternoon thus far, certainly in the first quarter, for Chris Miller and his Atlanta Falcons. They lead it 14 to nothing. And Randy, you had mentioned that Atlanta wanted to get on the opposite end of the field in preparation for something. For a field goal, if they have to indeed kick one here. They have third down. If they have to kick this ball, and it's got to be a field goal, they'd much rather do it out of this section of the field than in the dirt and sod on the other end. A little official housework being done to the clock or something. on this series. The 49ers have brought a defensive back out of the backfield. There's a defensive back that, uh, all things being equal, he kind of liked to be on offense. Mm -hmm. He told us yesterday he's getting a little bit frustrated just running clears and streaks and getting everything ready for everybody else. He says, I'm in good enough shape. I'm a great athlete. I can play offense for this team. Doesn't want to be used as a decoy. This will be a 29-yard field goal attempt by Norm Johnson. And it's good, so Johnson putting his foot to good use in the early going here. Falcons on top, 17-0 over San Francisco. And as we said at the top of the show, both of these clubs, along with the Los Angeles Rams, with marks of two and three, chasing the unbeaten in the New Orleans Saints. Coming up tonight on CBS, the National League Championship Series, Game 4, the Pirates against the Braves. And, of course, it all gets started with Baseball 91. The pitchers tonight, Andy Tomlin and Charlie Liebrandt. Liebrandt struggling the last month or so, but he'll get the nod for the Braves tonight. And the Pirates, very unsuccessful this season in Atlanta, having lost seven straight. And here we got Jerry Glanville's team out. The other Atlanta teams, they hit 17 nothing on San Francisco. And if the San Francisco 49er, 49er offense doesn't decide to come to the party here today, this team so far overall looks very listless and looks very, very flat. I mean, you're looking at a team right now, folks, that you look down the season and go, well, they might be 7-9, and nine, they might be 8-8. Eight and eight. The 49ers want to be considered a good winning team. This is a very pivotal game. They're going to have to turn it on today, or in my opinion, they can forget 1991 as a playoff year. Ooh, forget it? Mm. Carter from his own three. Across the 20. Dropped at about the 27. Well, staying busy in New York, Greg Gumbel. Let's check in with him. All right, James, at the Sky Dome in Toronto, the Twins keep on coming. Top of the second inning, Shane Mack with the base hit into right field. Chili Davis trots home from third. It's 2-0 Twins. They need one to move on to the World Series, J.B. All right, Greg, and... I want to come back to that comment Randy made. Randy, you said, my goodness, if the 49ers lose this game, you really predict doom the rest of the season? I think if they lose in this style, they look very flat and very emotionless. They have never played like this in the past. They've always been fired up. They've always had some tricks up their sleeve. Right now, they're just vanilla. Too tight in formation here. Young throws it complete to Jamie Williams. And Williams with enough for the first down. Tackled by Jesse Tuggle. Williams used to play, of course, for the Houston Oilers, where Glanville was. And this is a little something different. They've got Jerry Rice coming in motion. They have two tight ends. 
and bringing Williams way from the backside. Here's a touch pass by Steve Young. Floats this one right over the linebacker, right over Tuggles' head into Williams' arms. You know, does Williams still go by the name of Spider-Man? I know he was in love with that character at one point. I don't know. Has he got that Spider-Man suit underneath those that jersey? Look at those long red sleeves he's got on there. It's hot out here. 49ers could use it right now. First and 10. Ball at the 44. Young. Deep drop. Complete to Sydney. And no gain on the play. Randy, you were down on the field earlier, and we saw some shots already of players with wet towels over their head. Deion Sanders sitting in front of a fan. 76 degrees, but was it pretty warm on the field? 76 degrees there is the official weather forecaster as a report. I mean, if you stand out on the bay about a mile from here, that's what it'll be. It'll be 76 degrees. You get inside the bowl of candlestick here, I'm willing to bet you it's about 85 degrees on the floor of the stadium right now. You ought to know all too well, 13 years down in the trenches. There's June Jones on the left, the offensive coordinator, going over the charts with his quarterback, Chris Miller. Second and 10. again complete for the first down. So Jamie Williams, who came into the game with 10 catches, two already, covered by Brian Mitchell. And speaking to Atlanta yesterday, though, James, I got the impression Atlanta will let the 49ers move the ball and try to beat them with tight ends and running backs. They're going to take Jerry Rice and John Taylor as much as possible with their man coverage out of this ball game. And so far, aside from one catch by John Taylor, they have. Mm -hmm. Or Jerry Rice. I'm sorry, Rice got that ball. First and ten. Rathman and Sidney, the backs in the pro set for San Francisco. Young, audibly. And Young has to get rid of it quickly. And it's complete to Mike Sherrard. yard completion to Sherrard working on Deion Sanders. Watch Sherrard right up here at the top of the screen. Watch him when he goes, but also keep an eye on Steve Young and what a cool throw this is, followed by a real circus catch by Mark Sherrard over the top. He adjusts. He'd make Willie Mays proud in center field making catches like that over his head. One more time with a throw. Here comes the blitz. Scott Case coming in Steve Young's face. Plants him to the turf. Back to live action on first and goal. And Tom Rathman pulling his way forward. And Rathman picks up four. Well, Randy, you mentioned before also be careful for what you ask because you might get it. Deion Sanders was hoping to see more balls thrown his way today because he was facing a left-handed quarterback. And he figures I'll get more balls. It gives him more, more chances for a pick. But now the Niners have the ball here inside the 20. It has been a real problem for the 49ers this year, scoring touchdowns inside the 20, 29%. I mentioned earlier, you'd like that around 60%. In the Minnesota and Raiders game, the Niners had the ball seven times inside the 20, came away with one touchdown and two field goals. They need six here. Raskin in motion, rise to the near side. Young, runs it, and he's going to score. Touchdown, San Francisco, no flags. Watch Steve Young reverse out here. All the flow goes to the defense's left. There's nobody left. No one has the quarterback. That is a defensive breakdown. You play the 49ers and a running quarterback like Steve Young, on every play, someone has the responsibility of keeping an eye on that guy. Mike Kofor on for the point after. And it's good. So San Francisco narrows the gap with that touchdown. So you want a car with all the good stuff. Power steering, power brakes, automatic transmission, AM FM stereo, air conditioning, a terrific warranty, even an airbag. Well, over $10,000, you'll have lots of choices. But under $10,000, you'll find only one Dodge Shadow America.
Now get a warranty choice no other manufacturer offers. I can't tell you how it feels when you're way out there on your own tracking the bad guys. How it feels leading a skilled team that's the eyes and ears of the whole outfit. When all your training is coming alive. But finding those tanks and telling the air cavalry right where to hit them? I can tell you exactly how that feels. <laughs> needed a new battery, you got the heavy-duty model. When the tires started to wear, you spent a little more for the good ones. And even though the brakes could have made it a while longer, you said replace them. And now that fall's here, you're using Prestone Antifreeze. Its patented formula exceeds every performance standard set for the antifreeze industry. For corrosion and freeze-up protection, Prestone, we make it better than we have to. For some very good reasons. Back here in San Francisco, two turnovers certainly have hurt them. 49ers trailing by 14. No make that 10 now. Chris Miller starting off very strong. Speaking of the opposition to Chris Miller, Steve Young, you mentioned that he's been very uptight, Randy. You know him pretty well. I think the whole thing with Joe Montana and those pressures, as much as he'd say, it doesn't bother me, I haven't, I haven't prepared any way differently. I room with the guy for a year. He has been more tense. He has been more uptight. A drive like that does him a world of good. He reads the blitz. He hits the pass. He gets his tight end, and he tops it off by running it in. But for the 49ers to be effective, he is going to have to stay crisp and clean in the passing game and not make any of those interception mistakes. his way up to about the 18. You hear some of the guys in the field enjoying themselves. <laughs> I think a nice pop like that certainly would as you take a look at Sanders mouthing off. New Orleans stays unbeaten, knocking off the Eagles and Washington breaking the drought. Washington had lost seven straight to Cleveland back at RFK. And your Cowboys, Randy. They did it again. I tell you, the Cowboys are a team to keep an eye on, if not this year, next year for a long stay in the playoffs. Saw that Buffalo score. Jim Kelly was shaken up. As a matter of fact, Bobby Abair suffered a concussion in that victory by the Saints. First and 10, 10-51, left in the first half of play. Falcons on top, 17-7. Miller, complete to Mike Pritchett for the first down at the 35. A 16-yard pass play. Randy, we talked about Mike Pritchard, who really made himself into a decent receiver coming out of Colorado. You know, it's been well publicized about him going out and buying a bunch of videotapes and running videotapes at home and saying, I'm going to study. I was a running back, but I'm going to study to be a wide receiver. Look at the lead. There's some uh, pretty respectable names there from college last year. Randall Thrill Hill that's in Phoenix. Timmy Barnett's having a fine year at Kansas City, but that's the number one rookie, rookie wide receiver right now in the NFL. Lambeau likes him a lot. First and 10 from the 35. Miller runs to escape pressure. Drop. But Miller got two yards in the process before Timmy Harris came up. Tim Harris, first game with the 49ers after being traded to San Francisco from Green Bay. And Tim Harris right now, it's his first game back. Things are still a little bit rough for him. Watch him coming out of the corner right over here. Right there's Tim Harris. He's going to come out of that part of the screen. And watch him. He gets a little gangly. He gets a lot of control. He looks like he doesn't have com complete control of his body right here. Look at him. Whoa, 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 whoa. I got him. <laughs> Brings up a second and eight for the Falcons. 9-14 left in the first half. Pegram. And Pegram is dropped by Pierce Holt. No gain on the play. And Pierce Holt was certainly one guy the Falcons had an awful lot of praise for. And Pierce has been out for the last couple of weeks with a bad knee. Things have been a little stretched out in his ligament. Watch him right here. This is a textbook way a defensive tackle should play a draw. Watching him playing on Freilich. He's got control of Freilich. When he sees the running back come his way, he just sheds the blocker and makes the tackle. 
See, he is country strong. That's not a guy that might get in the weight room and lift a lot, but he is good old-fashioned Texas country strong. Country strong. Third and eight. And Pegram has the first down. Eric Pegram dashes his way up to midfield, stopped by Todd Bowles and Mark Lee, a 13-yard scamper by the rookie. Watch the hole open up over the right side. Right where Holt made the play last time, well, Atlanta goes right back. Holt, Holt's going outside for the pass rush. The entire defensive line for the Niners is going for the quarterback. Good call by Jerry Glanville and Atlanta Falcons. Because when you get a little Pegram out there, and he's got 10, 15 yards before he's going to hit a tackler, he can put, start putting moves on everybody. From midfield, first and 10, 7.43 left. Tracy Johnson, the back for the Falcons. And here comes Merton. Thrown incomplete in the direction of Andre Risen. And a good second effort on the part of Tracy Johnson to get back there and help out Chris Miller. I don't know if Merton Hanks put a move on Tracy Johnson or what, but he paralyzed him. He absolutely paralyzed the guy. Johnson's going to block him. And watch Hanks come in here from the right part of your screen here, going against the running back. Here comes the blitz. Johnson sees him, and he freezes. He lets him go. Now, now Johnson kind of recovers, though. He comes back and gets Michael Carter. If you're going to miss a little tiny guy, I'm sorry, it's Dennis Brown. He, go for missed, a big one. <laughs> he missed the 175-pounder, but he found the 310-pounder. <laughs> Second and ten. Home run ball. And a great play by Michael Haynes to prevent Dave Wehmer from intercepting that ball. And hats off to Dave Wehmer there. He's been suffering from a stretched out medial collateral ligament. Had a great quote for us Friday when we talked about it. He goes, you know, Randy, you played in this league. You know what it's like to be hurt. If you spit on it and it bubbles up, you can play. <laughs> but I didn't ask him, but was like, well, if you spit on it and it doesn't bubble up, what do you do? Anything short of amputation, he says, let's play, huh? Yep. Dave Wehmer's an all-pro, and he's ready to go. Mike Rozier at the back end for Atlanta on third and ten. Kevin Lewis, the cover man, and elated. As well he should be elated, because Chris Miller put that ball right on the money, and 45 strips this ball out from behind and knocks it down. Watch it right here. Ryzen's got him a little bit turned. Look at the contact right there. What a nice play. Got that left hand in there between Ryzen's body and the ball. So Bullhag will come on to punt. Taylor back to receive for San Francisco. And Taylor lets it go, and smartly so. Touchback, so the 49ers will bring it out to the 20 when we come back. Dodge announces the new Magnum Series engines. Engines that deliver as much as 44% more power. Here's a simple promise. Overall, today's Dodge trucks, gas and diesel, can deliver more payload, towing, and horsepower than Ford, Chevy, or any import. Dodge trucks, a powerful way to rediscover American value. Now, get up to $1,000 cash back on select Dodge trucks. To keep your competitive edge, you can phone it there, fax it there, even beam it there. But there's nothing like being there. With U.S. Air and the American Express card, you get a winning combination. The airline that begins with you and the card dedicated to providing unparalleled customer service. U.S. Air and the American Express card. Keep your competitive edge. The Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate. Some people perspire. We sweat. The only protection for us? New Arid Double X Sports Scent. 
It's the only leading sports solid that doesn't leave a white flaky mess. New Era Double X Sports Scent helps keep us extra... Extra dry. What is Prozac, and why does it drive the Church of Scientology up the wall? It's an antidepressant that millions swear by. Should they? 60 Minutes, tonight. Well, I talked about the 49ers being a little listless and not having a little zip. Watch Fishback 29 working against Cox and Tillman. This is what's known in the business as a chicken fight. They're bucking, they're hitting. Look at, look, now all of a sudden Tillman's going to be the, the peacekeeper. Fishback doesn't like that idea. Notice he didn't hit the official, though. Good idea. Fishback's a smart guy. First and ten. San Francisco complete to right. Nine-yard pass play. And it's going to be close, but it looks like he's going to be about a half a yard shy. Full house here at Candlestick Park. Site switch should have been at Fulton County Stadium, but the Braves are playing. So the Falcons are playing well here in San Francisco, leading the 49ers 17-7. 6.45 left in the first half of play. James Brown along with Randy Cross. And it's second, and we'll call it about six inches. And Rathman has it with plenty of room to spare. First down, San Francisco. The 49ers seem to be getting a little more comfortable on offense, opening it with Jerry Rice and a little blast there with Tom Rathman up the middle. What they need to do is they need to keep testing the aggressiveness of this Atlanta Falcons defense, especially on the corners working against Taylor and Rice. That's something I really believe they can take advantage of. Keith Henderson, Harry Sidney, the backs. First and 10, ball at the 34. First down, flag on the play. Keith uh -huh. Henderson with a 10-yard run, but there is a flag. Considering where they threw it, yep, tripping or holding. Mm. That'll bring it back. I wonder if our good friend Harris Barton was the man involved there. Tripping, number 61 offense. 10 yards, still first down. Oh, uh, that's Jesse Sapolu. Well, there are some people around the NFL that uh, from time to time have accused the 49ers of using some illegal blocks. Only and, from time to time. And, and, and leg whipping and tripping and whatnot, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> they don't call it. It isn't illegal. That Actually, time it's illegal. I thought you were the master of it, but somebody corrected me. I think they said Bruce Colley actually had it perfected, huh? Too tight in formation. First and 18. Ball back at the 26. And Young running it. And crazy legs. All of that wound up being a seven-yard run. Well, let's find out what's happening up in Toronto. Go back to New York and Greg. All right, J.B., at the Sky Dome in the bottom of the second inning, Kevin Tappany's pitch to Candy Maldonado is a call strike three. Cito Gaston of the Blue Jays objected, and he was ejected. Gene Tennis is now in charge of the Blue Jays who need to win to stay alive in the ALCS. It's 2 nothing Twins in the third, James. All right, Greg, so I guess the bad back can now go sit on the heating pad. Well, Gene Tennis might get a little early managerial practice. A lot of people think he's going to be a manager next year in the, in the American League. Meanwhile, back here, second and 13, fumble, and San Francisco recovers as Roy Foster fell on top of the ball. Well, that, that play right there for Roy Foster was two things. One, it was a good heads-up play. Second, you kind of wonder what's an offensive guard doing five, six, seven yards deep in the backfield, trying to get a block right there on an outside linebacker, and the ball pops loose. Good alert play by Foster. They, Falcons had that play completely stuffed. So Foster's happy here in San Francisco. Came from Miami. He comes out here. You know, in this offense, in this style, I think I can, I can play another three or four years. I feel comfortable. I'm making good money, and I'm happy. That sounds like ingredients for success. Third and 19. Young going up top, just beyond the outstretched hands of Jerry Rice, and the man step for step with him, the ex-49er, Tim McCoyer. 
And I'm sure next time Tim McKayer lines up over Jerry Rice, he will tell him about that last play. <laughs> no, not Timmy. Tim, Tim, <laughs> Tim had talked to a signpost if he thought he'd listen. That guy couldn't talk. And he covered Jerry Rice on that last play. He had, Jerry, you know, his nickname when he was the 49ers, he gave himself was the blanket. On that particular play, he had a blanket on Jerry Rice. Randy, he gave himself? <laughs> he said he had the cure for Rice-itis coming into the game. Tim McCoy, Joe Prokop, back to kick. And waiting this part, Deion Sanders. <laughs> and it's deflected. So the Falcons will operate with excellent field position. Only a 16-yard punt. But Atlanta so far is making all the plays to get themselves completely ahead in this game. And Fishback makes a nice heads-up play here on Prokop, who seems to be a little bit slow. Not just in slow motion. In live action, he seemed a little bit slow. Look at Fishback right there. Comes in and gets that left hand on the ball. So the first-year player from Carson Newman, not only pushing in a chicken fight, but doing well otherwise. Hi, my name is Mike. This is a story about me in... ...at the chop shop as the Braves fight to expand their two-to-one lead over the Pirates. It's Tomahawk Frenzy and the Battles of October tonight. And game four of the NLCS can be seen tonight here on CBS. With 3.35 left, Atlanta's got all three timeouts. It's critical for the 49ers to hold them to, at worst-case scenario, a field goal here. First and 10 for Atlanta. Ball at the 41. And Miller drills it complete for the first down. So Chris Miller looking very, very sharp with that 11-yard pass play as he finds Michael Haynes. Well, we mentioned at the top of the game that Chris Miller was saying, they got to let me do what I do best, and that's throw the ball to my four wide receivers in the red gun. That's exactly what Jerry Glanville's done in this first half, and he's looked extremely confident and extremely strong. Chris Miller, 11 for 19, 169 yards, two touchdowns, all in the first half of play. 3-0-3 remaining. Chafee, the lone back end for the red gun set. Chafee, the ball carry, and Chafee ahead for about four. We'll bring up a second and six. And San Francisco burns off a timeout. Both teams with two remaining. 17-7 ball game, Falcons on top. Sports and Science Converge, brought to you by AT&T, sponsor the 92 U.S. Olympic team. The U.S. swim team is hoping to dominate the competition at the 92 Barcelona Olympics. Since then, AT&T has stayed on the cutting edge of communications. For example, AT&T just invented a new 800 service for small businesses. It uses your existing line and costs only $6 a month. At AT&T, almost half our business comes from small business. When you succeed, we succeed. Call about our 800 offer. At the U.S. Olympic Training Center, U.S. Swimming's 65,000-gallon flume provides a unique workout environment. Athletes swim against a current, and strokes can be analyzed both in the flume and on computer, giving U.S. swimmers a big training edge. Dodge announces the new Magnum Series engines. Engines that deliver as much as 44% more power. Drop a 230 horsepower Magnum V8 into a 4x2 Dodge Dakota, and you can outhaul, outpower, and outpull the standard half ton pickups from Ford and Chevy. Dodge trucks, a powerful way to rediscover American value. Now, get up to $1,000 cash back on select Dodge trucks. 2.44 left in the first half. Falcons on top by 10, and there's one half of a tandem that needs to be involved a bit more, Randy. Well, between Jerry Rice and John Taylor, they've got two catches for 34 yards, and that is what John, that's what, that's what uh, Rice has, is two catches for 34 yards. That's mm -hmm. it. And right here in this situation, James, I talked about field goal being the worst-case scenario for the Niners. If, it, if the Atlanta goes to 20-7, to that keeps them within two touchdowns. If they go up 24-7, to seven, that means three scores. Two touchdowns and a field goal to get ahead of them. Robert 26, 
second and six. Pegram. And Eric Pegram had his number read well that time. A loss of three on a play will bring up a third and nine. Merton Hanks, along with Bill Romanowski on top Time of that out. one. San Francisco, that's their second charge timeout. Well, you heard Bob McElwee. So San Francisco now with one timeout remaining, Atlanta with two. And the Niners burning off these timeouts in an obvious attempt to say, if you're going to kick a field goal and you're going to score on us, we're going to save enough clock that when we get the ball back, we can move down the field and get a chance to drive at the end of the half. Coming up on the Dockers NFL Today Halftime Report, Greg and Terry will have all the scores, highlights, and, of course, the latest information from around the league. Greg will also update you on what's taking place in the ALCS between Minnesota and Toronto. Third and nine. Atlanta, five of eight third down conversions. He's gone to Ryzen and Hayes in these situations so far today. And he goes back to Ryzen. And Ryzen will not have it. Good job of tackling that time by Merton Hanks. Only four yards picked up on the play. And the Niners will get an automatic timeout here as the clock winds down to the two-minute warning. But here's at Ryzen in motion. Bring him one way. Bring him the other. But Hanks does a good job of mirroring him the entire time, keeps his relationship, and doesn't, importantly, doesn't miss a tackle. And we're at the two-minute warning mark of the first half. 49ers trailing by 10. There's a place where the home team always wins, where fashion models cling to ordinary guys, and ordinary guys really know how to dance. Why can't life be like beer commercials? Why? Ask. Why? Try Bud Dry. It's dry brewed, not watered down, to drink light yet satisfied completely. Because when all the world's a stage, your refreshment should be real. took all day. But they finally came up with one very big idea. What do you bet they printed on a laser jet from Hewlett Packard? A motorcraft spark plug has to fire 500 times a minute. Over its life, that's a spark five miles long. Shouldn't you install that peace of mind? Motorcraft quality parts from Ford. I smoke, but where I work, it's not allowed. No problem. I've got Wrigley Spearmint Gum. That cool, clean taste always works for me. When I can't smoke, I enjoy pure chewing satisfaction. Falcons come back. It's fourth down. They will be attempting a field goal of 43 yards with Norm Johnson making that kick. Former indoor kicker, a, do a dome kicker from Seattle. His previous long this year has been 36 yards, so he's seven yards outside of that. Remember the swirling winds and kind of the psychological effect it has on kickers here at Candlestick Park. He's missed a 47 and a 53 yard of this season. up and it looks good and it is so norm johnson with his season best of 43 yarder and jerry glanville's falcons move out in front by the score of 20 to 7. and maybe jerry glanville will remember his name now he always says when he gets a new kicker he goes it's just number nine <laughs> you know, we, we did the opener he had brad deliuso was in there he was number five he says until they do something for me i don't even bother learning their name well glanville obviously trying to get a a day's jump on a celebration with the rest of his team there. Glanville will be 50 years of age tomorrow. That's something that's become kind of a mini tradition here for the Atlanta Falcons. Every time they kick off, anytime something good happens, anytime anything bad happens, it seems, Jerry Glanville gathers his entire team for a kickoff. 
on the field and give them all the whole high five and he gets in the middle and does his little cheer. That's Bobby Butler walking right next to Jerry Glanville there who's inactive today as co veteran cornerback wearing one of those Jerry Glanville shirts. He comes out with a different one about every week or so. Obviously he's got a nice deal with uh, some t-shirt shop. And don't forget, coming up at halftime, Greg and Terry will bring you up to date on what took place around the league and is taking place in baseball. Carter from the goal line. Across the 20. Up to about the 33-yard line. Dexter Carter with a nice return. Finally tackled by Jeff Donaldson. And remember, two games ago, the 49ers in a very similar situation at the end of the first half moved almost this exact same list a distance in 23 seconds against the Los Angeles Rams. It doesn't take this offense long to rev things up. With a minute and 49 seconds, they can actually figure in to mix in a couple runs here. They also have one timeout left. And Atlanta has two timeouts remaining. From the 34, first and 10 out of the pro set. 11 up front. And Young, audibly. He's a bit of a three-step drop. It's going to be a quick pass. That it is. Can he get it away? And he does to Sydney. And Sydney, a loss of two on the play. So Young realized what was taking place. But San Francisco comes up with a two-yard loss. And the clock continues to wind down. Less than 1.30 to play in the first half. Second and 12. Complete intended receiver was Mike Sherrard and William Evers with a good defensive play. And boy, has Evers come up nice here in the first half. Deion Sanders mentioned that he and Tim McKire both talked with Evers after his bad game two weeks ago to shore up his attitude and his confidence. We well, mentioned earlier that he was put in a bad situation. In fact, Deion said, if you're going to put a big wide receiver in the slot, put Tim or I over him. I mean, put us in there. We're the ones that know this defense well. Evers has adjusted very well. That was a combination of a good play by Evers and a ball slightly thrown behind the receiver by Young. Third and 12. 49ers. 0 for 2. Third down conversions. And Young escapes one tackler, throws it complete to Sidney, and Sidney has the first down. Good escape ability shown by Steve Young. And he completes a 14-yard pass play in San Francisco. Calls for timeout. And that is their last timeout here in the first half. Some quarterbacks have very smooth scrambling styles. Steve's scrambling style would, I don't know, is frantic a style? But Steve looks frantic. I mean, he gets back there, and he knows there's trouble coming. Those feet never stop moving. Guys make a big mistake when they try to tackle a quarterback like a Steve Young or the big quarterbacks like the Kellys and Elways. They go down around their legs. They have such good leg strength. They can pull out of those leg tackles. You've got to hit a quarterback like that high and hold on. Take a look at Bobby Butler also talking with Deion Sanders. You mentioned Bobby Butler, number Woodware, number 23, if he were in there. 11-year veteran, so he certainly has some words of wisdom, wisdom that is, for the DBs. And if you are the Atlanta defense in this situation, you've done a fabulous job on Rice and Taylor. Your cornerbacks have limited them to two catches so far in the first half. But this is a time in the game where a DB will take a, t a playoff, as Tim McHire said, uh, said to us. DBs take a playoff, and Rice and Taylor will take advantage of it. And Toronto has taken the lead. Against Minnesota, 3-2. And Scott Case with the safety blitz. And Young has to get rid of it. Incomplete thrown in the direction of Jerry Rice. Here's Scott Case right here. Watch him coming in on this blitz. And what it does is it forces Steve Young to get rid of this ball. He had Jerry Rice doing kind of an out and or up and out, but look at Case putting this hit on Steve Young, and he's just throwing a ball to a spot there. He's not throwing it to a receiver. He's putting that ball up and hoping Jerry Rice can run under it. Both Rice. teams, I'm sorry, James, both teams have been very aggressive out of the out of the defensive backfield with their blitzes today. Second and ten. Flag on the play as Young goes up top, looking for Taylor. He has it. Touchdown, San Francisco.
penalty will be against Atlanta holding. A 54-yard pass play from Young to Taylor, and that is Taylor's first catch of the afternoon. And what a biggie. And there's Scott Case on the sideline, the man that was victimized by John Taylor. We talked about those DBs. You can't relax against John Taylor and Jerry Rice. And they caught Atlanta Falcons in a great matchup with a safety like Scott Case against a speedster like John Taylor. Mike Cofer on for the point after. And he's got it. San Francisco cuts the Atlanta lead to six. And we'll take a look at this from up high so we can get a good perspective on exactly what it is that John Taylor did. Here he is way up top. And he's working in here. We get this going. There we go. Now watch John Taylor. The coverage will be dropped. And Case is at the right part of your screen there working as a safety. It's his coverage now. He slips a little on that infield, and that's all John Taylor needs. Steve Young rolling to his right, turns around, and spots the receiver open. Watch it. Steve Young, he threw that, he threw that touchdown immediately, goes to the officials. What's going on? What, look at him. I think he's happy. That's a good way to loosen a guy up and get a little success. So for John Taylor, the big soap opera fan, he comes through with a big reception here for San Francisco. We'll take a look at it again from the end zone. It'll, everything will be coming in from your right on the screen. Follow with that roll right. Left-handed quarterback rolling right is fairly unusual. But by the time we see it, Case has already slipped. And you just cannot give John Taylor a three to four yard head start. And a Steve Young with that kind of arm, the time to throw. Well, you knew better when we came in to talk with John Taylor on Friday. We saw him watching the hearings, the Senate hearings on TV. I thought, in fact, he was just very engrossed with that. Oh, you, you said, hey, this is, a, this is a great guy. I said, James, he's just waiting to see if his soap operas are going to come on. All my children comes on. You need a one store. Where is it? Sanders from the 15 up to about the 23. And talk about a lightning quick scoring drive. Five plays covering 66 yards, 107 off the clock. Young, a 54-yard pass to John Taylor. We talked about at the beginning of the game that the Niners would have to be kind of backed up. They'd have to come out swinging and fighting. They faced an Atlanta Falcons team that was coming out swinging and fighting from the bell. And now finally, the 49ers have got a little aggression, a little style, a little attack in their offense to even this thing back up. So the Falcons with two timeouts and 45 seconds remaining in the first half of play as Chris Miller will operate from his own 22. Unlike the 49ers in their very formations, look for the Falcons here coming out in the red gun to keep this defense spread out. They've got the timeouts and they've got 45 seconds. Plenty of time for Chris Miller to move his team downfield. Rozier, the lone back in the red gun set. And it's Rozier, the ball carrier. Rozier up to about the 27-yard line. We'll call it five, picked up on the play. And you see the clock winding down. And it looks like Atlanta may not run another play and head to the locker room with a six-point lead over the 49ers. Jerry Glanville taking that Big Ten approach. You can run the clock out not throw a pass, not take a chance of an interception or a big play against you, take your lead and go to the locker room. Well, a good first half of action here. And we find the Falcons on top by six. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Dodge, a great way to rediscover American value. McDonald's, getting more for your money. That's McDonald's today. And by Hewlett Packard Laser Jet Printers. They'll get you noticed. What's the most important thing in your life? My answer is right here with me. It's my wife, Holly, and our two daughters. 
I'm Tom Rathman of the San Francisco 49ers, and I'm convinced our young people today need our love and values that only a home and a family can teach. That's why here in the San Francisco Bay Area, the United Way funds the Friends for Youth program that helps troubled youth by giving them guidance, counseling, and personal attention they need to grow into productive, happy adults. Here it's one-on-one. -on -one. Children are matched with adult friends. They're finding the love they need, and most importantly, a friend to share the tough problems of growing up. In football and in life, the best offense is a good defense. Your donation through the United Way is helping these kids today, because we know we'll need them tomorrow. United Way, it brings out the best in all of us. This message furnished by the National Football League. My hero, Isaiah Thomas, Kevin Costner, Mr. Wong. These are teachers, but to the kids they've reached, they're heroes. My hero, Mrs. Wooten. If I don't get through to that child, who knows, maybe no one else will. Teachers have the power to wake up young minds, to be heroes, to make a difference. Reach for that power. Teach. Find out how by calling 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher. Be a hero. I like the filter lights, please. The hundreds. Soft pack. The thin ones. In a box. The menthol kings. Yeah, the green guys. Every day, a half million American kids buy their cigarettes from a friendly neighborhood pusher. The 100. Soft pack. I like the filter lights, please. Hey, two packs. We're going to run out. Vending machines don't know any better. But what about the rest of us? When there is an urgent need anywhere in the world, AmeriCare's crisis teams fly into action and hours later fly to the scene. AmeriCare's has helped millions, yet many more millions remain helpless. When disaster or famine bring homelessness and hunger, within hours, AmeriCare's brings relief. AmeriCare's, the first to bring help, the first to bring hope. Call 1-800-486-HELP. The NFL Today Dockers Halftime Report is sponsored by Levi's Dockers. Relax, you're among friends. Welcome back to our studio in New York. All of you who are watching the Falcons and the 49ers, Greg Gumbel along with Terry Bradshaw at halftime. It's the Falcons 20 and the San Francisco 49ers 14. Now, before we continue, let's update you on Major League Baseball. Game 5 of the American League Championship Series, the Toronto Blue Jays have rallied for three runs in the third inning, and as they play the fourth, the Blue Jays lead the Twins by a score of 3-2. to two. The big blow, an RBI double down the left field line by Joe Carter. That drove Devon White home, and later a ground out by John Olerud brought the uh, go-ahead run across. The Twins, of course, trailing the Minnesota, or tra trailing the... Uh, Toronto Blue Jays right now 3-2 in the fourth inning. Minnesota needs one win to move on to the World Series. I want to remind you that Game 4 of the National League Championship Series comes your way this evening. Baseball 91 at 8 o'clock. And then it's the Pirates and the Braves. Randy Tomlin will go for the Pittsburgh Pirates and Charlie Liebrandt for the Atlanta Braves. Now back to football at the Meadowlands. It's uh, the New York Jets and the Houston Oilers. The Oilers leading as they approach halftime by a score of 13-10. to 10. Warren Moon has thrown a touchdown pass in his 19th consecutive game there. The Kansas City Chiefs are leading Miami 28 nothing at halftime. Christian Okoye, 117 yards and two touchdowns in the first half alone. The Los Angeles Rams at halftime are leading the Chargers 16 to 14. This game significant. Jim Everett threw his first touchdown pass of the season, an 18-yarder to Jim Price. Now, earlier today, let's go to the vet in Philadelphia, where the Eagles fell to the New Orleans Saints by a score of 13 to 6. And uh, Bobby A. Bear shaken up in this game, so on came Steve Walsh to do a credible job. You look for situations where you can isolate a back on a linebacker. The back should be quicker and faster. Dalton Hilliard is. He beats the linebacker, Seth Joyner, gets the touchdown pass. And that number one defense in the NFL did a number on Brad Gable, intercepted him four times, intercepted his uh, substitute, Pat Ryan, here, 59 yard return to the Eagle 12 yard line. The Saints held on to win it 13 to 6. They go 6 and 0 on the year while the Eagles fall to 3 and 4. At RFK Stadium in Washington, Joe Gibbs looking on. Good day for Mark Rippon. Good day for Art Monk. Our Monk's having a fabulous year. Rippon playing better and better each week. 
It's the seven wins in a row for the Skins, and Coach Joe Gibbs says for each win, they get a day off. So right now, they get a whole week off. Yeah, forget about that. Meanwhile, <laughs> in Irving, Texas, the Cowboys fell behind early to the Cincinnati Bengals. This is a pretty good run by Cincinnati's Harold Green. Oh, this is a great run. Second-round draft choice out of South Carolina. Cuts to the left, down the right side, a running Jesse all the way into the end zone. Ah, but here come the Cowboys. They moved their record to 5-2. and two. Troy Aikman threw for 278 yards and a touchdown, and Emmett Smith will go two yards here. The Cowboys went on top 28-23. They won it by a score of 35-23. to 23. At Minnesota, the Vikings snapped their three-game losing streak. Rich Gannon will look downfield and find Chris Carter coming over the middle. He's got him. Gets a nice little block. Goes 43 yards for the touchdown. Vikings were up early and stayed there. And then Gannon can run as well. Yeah, this is one of the things that Ty Moore wanted from his quarterback, Gannon. He has the ability to scramble and the ability to run. Looks like Steve Young, only a bigger version. Great effort. Gets him to the end zone. Big win for the Vikings today. Vikings moved to 3-4 and four on the year. The Buffalo Bills lost Jim Kelly in the first half to a concussion. Thurman Thomas carried the ball on the ground. That's a 4 14-yard touchdown run, one of two TDs for uh, Thurman Thomas. Buffalo wins it 42-6, and they move their record to 6-1 and one on the year, and Indianapolis falls to 0-7. And, and the NFL today continues here on CBS after this word from your local station. What is Prozac, and why does it drive the Church of Scientology up the wall? It's an antidepressant that millions swear by. Should they? 60 Minutes, tonight. What league you been playing in? California Penal. They were chosen for one reason. I want us to finish dead last. And they became the bad news of baseball. My kind of team. Just a bit outside. Tom Berenger, Charlie Sheen, and Corbin Burnson in the network premiere Major League Tuesday. This is CBS. Back here at halftime at Candlestick Park in San Francisco, Falcons on top of the 49ers, 20 to 14, and it is indeed a pleasure for Randy Cross and myself to welcome to the booth a uh, guest indeed. Don't call me MC, it's now Hammer. And Hammer, this is a real pleasure for James Brown to be joined with, with no longer MC Hammer, but Hammer. Hey, well, you, well, I've been with you before, James, so uh, it's no problem. But after it's, South Carolina. Good, Randy. good, James. All right, good. Good. First of all, what in the world brings you here to San Francisco as opposed to being out there on tour? Well, um, I just came in from Atlanta. I, I was down there yesterday learning how to, you know, tomahawk chop and... Uh, it's one of the uh, the greatest feelings ever uh, in baseball is to be at Atlanta Brave games. They got a big uh, emotional thing going mm -hmm. down there, and it's a lot of fun. So I flew in here to to be with Prime Time, Jerry Rice, uh, Jerry Glanville. All these uh, different athletes are in my new video, and I came in to say thank you and say hello. New video. Uh huh. Hey. <laughs> Describe it. We were talking earlier at halftime about that home run. Ron Gant hits that home run in Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. You said that place went absolutely crazy. Oh man, it erupted, and uh, you couldn't hear yourself. And they're doing the chant, and they got the tomahawk chop going. And uh, I saw Jimmy Carter down there, and he's chopping away. And Jane Not Jimmy Carter. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was down there. So it was a lot, a lot of fun. 
Now, you mentioned uh, on the first touchdown, going back to football, football a little bit, that Andre Rising, when he scored that first touchdown, he did something a little unique. Well, we were talking before the game, and he wanted me to, you know, show him the latest dance move, and I showed him, and uh, he said when he scored, he was going to do it, and uh, he scored, he did it, and he ran over, and he found me, and he said, well, was that it? <laughs> I said, you know, that, that was it. All right, we're going to keep you around for a little bit going into the third quarter as well, but you had something that you wanted to say as well. Oh, I just wanted to say, you know, hello to all the people in Atlanta and also uh, to Judge Thomas Hangtuff. All right. And we'll be back with the second half of today's game between Atlanta and San Francisco in just a moment. These are truly amazing times. Yeah? Yeah. I fly from Chicago to Dallas at 550 miles an hour. Simultaneously, my luggage flies from Chicago to Cheyenne, Wyoming at an identical speed on a totally separate aircraft. The wonders never cease. We can only hope. Relax. You're among friends. Levi's 100% cotton dockers. How much insulation do you have in your attic? Three inches? Six inches? Well, the Department of Energy recommends R38 for most American homes, which is equivalent to a foot of Owens Corning pink fiberglass. So grab a ruler and measure your attic insulation. Then get rolling. And get a foothold on your energy bills. For more information, call 1-800-GET-PINK. Imagine a rent car company that offers special delivery right to your door. That's Enterprise. Here, let me help you. Enterprise, a special rent-a-car company that gives you special delivery. The Allstate agent who helps insure your car can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate. How do you flunk a football hero and live to tell about it? What makes you think you've got the right to fail my son, Gibson? What makes you think I'm Gibson? I'm the electrician! An all-new teach, Wednesday. Monday, it's a very special episode of Murphy Brown. Avery Brown. One hell of a bro. Murphy Here. says goodbye to her mom with special guest Darren McGavin. I always thought that I'd be the first to go. Dad. I was sure she'd figure out some way to kill me. Followed by an all-new Designing Women. Monday. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Toyota and the all-new totally redesigned Camry. Toyota, I love what you do for me. Owens Corning Fiberglass. We can help you get a foothold on your energy bills. And by Miller Lite. It's it. And that's that. For the beautiful skyline of San Francisco, as we take a look at Lumbar Street, known as the crookedest street in America, indeed. But I tell you what, Jerry Glanville has done everything pretty straight in the first half. His team on top, 20 to 14. Back to live action here. Dexter Carter. And Carter gets it up near the 30. Now, Randy, I know as we take a look at the first half stats, we're a little surprised. Time of possession in favor of Atlanta hasn't been something they've done that strong this year. But by the same token, the 49ers, for the first time in a lot of years that I can remember, are behind on time of possession. They've only had the ball an average of 29 minutes and 30 seconds. It's usually around 32, 33, 34 for them. The edge is usually on their side. And there's your quarterback comparison so far today. Obviously, Miller off to a good start, but Young, big edge in that last drive at the end of the first half really helped those stats add up. First and 10 for San Francisco. Young on the bootleg, and Young. Runs into a wall by the name of Jesse Tuggle, a yard shy of the first down marker. And while Young is known as a good scrambler, Randy, you got to hold your breath when you see your quarterback running like that. You know George Seifert feels a little funny about it when he sees him run, but remember, Steve Young is a 4-5 type runner, and there's Mike Holmgren sitting in the middle with the headsets on right by that left-handed bar there. And, and Mike Holmgren right here told us, he says, look, I hold my breath. I hold just about anything I get my hands on when I see Steve Young start running because when he gets in there, he has all sorts of trouble not diving, not sliding. Steve Young likes to butt heads when he runs. Two tight end set on second and one. On the ground, and Henderson has the first down. 
So Keith Henderson, the ball carrier, giving San Francisco the first down. Ball will be marked at about the 43-yard line. We took a look at those halftime stats. I think they were a little bit deceiving in that Atlanta just seemed to make a couple of mental errors late, especially the cornerbacks and safeties out on the defensive backfields had stifled Rice and Taylor in the first half, but they got that play and they popped that big one. It's what you can't do against 40, the 49ers is relax. First and 10, Jerry Rice in motion. And Young stepping up and running. And has his helmet knocked off. And boy, you talk about holding breath. I'd hate to see if Mike Holmgren has fallen off the stool yes. and Steve Young had his helmet knocked off. He actually looked like he was thinking about turning and keeping on running. Watch this thing here. Good job by Atlanta downfield. They've got everybody manned up. They're all covered. Look at his chin strap is undone. That's why his helmet came off. Rick Bryan, look at him grab for it. How can you hold the ball in one hand, grab for the helmet in the other while the guy is trying to tackle you? Well, you talk about good reflexes. Home just, home just picked himself up off of the floor, Randy. <laughs> <laughs> He's just shaking his head going, oh, my goodness, oh, my goodness. Four carries for 27 yards on the part of Young. Second and five. And Young throws it for the first down to Taylor. To about the 32 of Atlanta. Deion Sanders, the man... Taylor working on as Steve Young racked hard that time. Young's tough and Young's physical, but he cannot keep taking this pounding like this. Between the blitzes he's getting out of the safeties, I mean, out of the defensive backfield little linebackers, they're getting some free shots on him. Look at Torrey Epps comes around on a stunt. Oof. Steve Young's going to have to stop. Get, or he's going to have to get some better protection is what he's going to have to get because these kind of shots, along with his running, will start taking their toll by the middle of the fourth quarter. And for, it seems the officials have disallowed yeah. that last play. Yeah, looks like they called a motion penalty on um, on Jerry Rice, Randy, I believe. Boy, talk about a late call on that one. Never saw the flag at all. Well, that hit that Steve Young took from 270-pound Torrey Epps goes for naught. Yeah, and Steve Young during that play ran over to the sideline, changes, changes helmets with Steve Bono. My question is, does it fit? On second and ten. Trying to go back to Taylor. And the fans want pass interference from Deion Sanders and don't get it. Often we'll bring up a third and ten. Often when you look at pass interference, people think of the things, well then, it's got to be contact. He had to hold him, with the right, hold him with the right hand. Hold him with the left hand. Look at this replay here and watch the body of Deion Sanders. The hands aren't the only things that, have, that can cause interference. See his body? His body is all over John Taylor before that ball gets there. That was pass interference. Well, Dion knows he escaped one that time, and Jerry Glanville with a slight smile. Kind of like offensive linemen. They say if they don't call it, it ain't holding. Mm -hmm. So Steve Young burns off a timeout. San Francisco with two left, 11.42 in the third. even better Camry. And now, it's here. The all-new 1992 Camry from Toyota. Roomier. Quieter. More powerful. Safer. And even more beautiful. The all-new Camry from Toyota. We just couldn't leave well enough alone. Miller Lite goes to millions of parties a year. These guys want to go to all of them. They can't stay long. 
everywhere you go. Everybody's drinking it. Oops. You don't say beer now, you say light. Miller Light. It's it, and that's that. And the visitor here at the Candlesticks. Candlestick Park after surgery on Wednesday, Joe Montana, hidden behind the glass there. We're probably from a from a standpoint of uh, just distraction, the best place for Joe to be would, be would be up in the stands in the box, you know, sitting with Mr. DeBartolo and watching this game quietly and calmly. Down on the sidelines, things can get a little dangerous and you might even be a distraction. Of course, he is still in just a little bit of pain, cast on his elbow for the next seven to ten days. Third and ten here on the field. San Francisco at the 43. Yup, going up top, looking for a race. He's got him. Touchdown, San Francisco. Tim McCarr have been battling. You know Tim McCarr has been talking to him. But right there, Tim McCarr took a chance, went for a jam on Rice. And you can't do that on Jerry Rice. If you're going to do it, you better be positive you're going to get it. And Tim didn't get it. That's the best receiver, ladies and gentlemen, has played in this league in decades. Going after his block. So the score remains tied at 20 apiece. Folks, that was a 57-yard pass play for the touchdown from Young to Rice. If an automobile is a reflection of who you are, then the beautiful new Toyota Camry will say a lot for you. Go on, Oscar. Go on, boy. Oh, look, a tennis ball. Look at that, buddy. Hey, hey, get the paper, boy. Go on. Oscar's no fool. No way is he going to leave the comfort of Carrier's high-efficiency gas heat. Why don't you just get the leash, Frank? Me? I'm not going out. Carrier makes it better inside. Natural gas makes it more affordable. For home heating, for cooking, or hot water, use clean natural gas. America's best energy value. 89% of business travelers don't have a fat expense account. Luckily, you'll find our rates as comfortable as our rooms. Holiday Inn. Stay with someone you know who really knows you. The Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. Allstate Life. Financial strength you can count on. The show that keeps you on the edge of your seat and prepares you to save lives. Over 65 lives saved and coming. Don't miss Rescue 911 Tuesday. Probably the biggest play of the game. Might be very critical. Watch what happens right here. Jordan, number 40, comes right in through there. Right inside of Jamie Williams for the block. 20 to 20. And Tim McKayer is on the sideline. You know it kills him. As much as he was talking before the game about shutting Jerry down, giving up a big play like that hurts. Deion Sanders from his own goal line. And Deion, high-stepping from midfield. Touchdown, Atlanta, 100 yards for Deion Sanders. as he is, first ever kickoff return touchdown. And that ties Dennis Pearson of St. Louis. That occurred back in 1978. 
Well, he's had him as punt returns, and he's had him on interception returns, but now a kickoff return. And look at Tim McCarry right next to him. He's got his buddy 22 is right next to him, telling him how good that run was. Big boost for Atlanta, and this crowd here in Candlestick is absolutely calm. And Norm Johnson puts the Falcons back out in front by a touchdown, 27 to 20. And boy, Randy, as I mentioned, you have to go back to 1978 when Dennis Pearson did that against St. Louis, 100 yards, and take a look at it again. Well, I tell you, James, you can coach blocking, you can coach out kicking, you can coach a lot of things, but you can't coach speed. Look at the blocking that the Atlanta Falcons do, but now it's Deion Sanders, and whatever his speed is, it's a lot faster than anybody on the field San Francisco has. Watch the end, though. A little mug. Would that be a Vogue move here? <laughs> I don't know if Hammer showed him that move. <laughs> Deion Sanders, who did not, interestingly, want to talk about baseball at all, said, I'm here to do a job today, and boy, has he done it, at least with that move there. You know, he, he and Tim McCire are so close, I'm sure he also feels good for Tim McCire taking just a little bit of the sting out of that move beaten by Jerry Rice. Well, there's good news, bad, to, bad news right there for primetime. The good news is you just ran a ball 100 yards and you scored a touchdown. The bad news is you better enjoy that drink of water on the sideline because you're in again. Dexter Carter back awaiting this kickoff from Norm Johnson. He said this would be a fight, be kind of a street fight with them just trading punches. That's exactly what they've just done in the last 30 seconds is trade two big haymakers. And it's a short one from the 13, Carter. And Carter gets it up to the 30. As tempers flare a bit on the field there. Remember to join us tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern Time for Baseball 91 with Pat O'Brien and Tommy Lasorda. And that'll be followed by Game 4 of the NLCS between the Pirates and the Braves. Randy Tomlin gets the call for the Pirates and Charlie Liebrandt for the Braves. That's tonight on CBS. And if I'm Tomlin pitching against the Braves today and he's a sinker ball thrower, I want to keep those sinkers down. Because mm -hmm. the way those Braves are hitting the balls, at, balls out of the chop shop could be trouble early. That coupled with the fact that Lee Brand has been experiencing just a little difficulty over the past month. But Atlanta certainly has history on its side. As I mentioned before, the Pirates have yet to win this season in Atlanta. As you take a look at George Seifert. Randy, Steve Young was not the only one uptight this week. I think that's a fair assessment as far as George Seifert is concerned. Well, this is not an organization that's very used to being two and three and have a team with a three-game lead now on them in the division. at 10 and complete as Steve Young finds Tom Rathman for seven yards Deion Sanders was not in on that play Brian Mitchell in to give him a breather so take a look at the Minnesota Toronto score Toronto out in front of Minnesota five to two that game moving to the fifth inning And we'll return to San Francisco after this message and a report from CBS News. It's stuck. You see? Yeah. Every channel. Light beer. Light beer. Um. Well, we're going to have to drain it. Grab anything that'll hold beer. Oh, and uh, <coughs> call some friends. Will you look at that? Yeah, I'm looking. Miller Lite made beer better. The great Pilsner taste keeps you ahead of it all. Everybody likes that. You don't say beer now, you say light. The beer that beers become. Miller Lite. Is it? And that's that. We got a problem. Any ideas? I've got a contact, sir. Well, get on it then. Secure the area. Get him here now. Close to position A. Reverse three and four. Let's roll! Go, go, go! Where'd you find him?
right here. He's been with the organization for a while. Nice job, sir. With years of training behind them, Napa technicians provide a secret service everyone should know about. With a 2,510-pound payload, a 5,000-pound towing capacity, and a powerful V6 engine, the 1992 Toyota one-ton pickup might just surprise you. Spend an evening at the Chop Shop as the Braves fight to expand their two-to-one lead over the Pirates. It's Tomahawk Frenzy in the Battles of October tonight. This is Dan Rather in New York with the CBS News update. Professor Anita Hill has taken a lie detector test. The expert who administered the test says it indicates she is telling the truth on all major counts. He is a former FBI lie detector expert. Again, if you can't hear, there was no indication of deception to any of those relevant questions. Uh, so it's therefore my opinion that uh, Ms. Hill is truthful uh, when she answered the questions that were asked regarding uh, Judge Thomas. Professor Hill took the lie detector test voluntarily. Her legal team arranged it. Inside the Senate hearing room, most of the afternoon was taken up by four witnesses who said Anita Hill had indicated to them Clarence Thomas had sexually harassed her and that she had told them years ago about it. Now the hearing is turning to cooperating and character witnesses for Clarence Thomas. The hearing about the Supreme Court nominee is expected to continue deep into the night. We'll try to keep you posted. Dan Rather, CBS News, New York. Now back to the football game. All right, Dan, and back here in San Francisco. San Francisco with the first down after that Steve Young run. And this is Keith Henderson. And Henderson trying to stretch it out and turn the corner, picking up only three. Steve Young has five carries for 32 yards on the day. And Randy, again, Steve Young apparently does not know the meaning of giving oneself up with the slide with the feet first. He's still running like there's about two or three other quarterbacks behind him. But here in San Francisco right now, the only quarterback, real quarterback on the sideline available is Steve Bono. Steve Bono, number 13, would be coming in if Steve Young went down. People ask all the time, with two quarterbacks, who's the emergency quarterback? The emergency quarterback for the 49ers is Harry Sidney. So Steve and Steve stay healthy. Second and seven, 9.02, left in a third period of play. Young complete to Carter, and Carter well shy of the first down, only a yard picked up, tackled by Deion Sanders. And this is the kind of thing right here that Steve Young's caught a lot of flack about. He's got good completion, not bad yardage. Touchdowns are a little bit down. The bottom line people judge quarterbacks by, they're kind of like pitchers, is their record. Montana last year was 5-0. Steve Young so far is 2-3. The record by no means is only a reflection on Steve Young. The defense has also broke down at crucial times. Third and six. and the first down and the ball will be marked at about the 31 of Atlanta a 22 yard pass play you hear it time and time again but when Jerry Rice and John Taylor are dangerous is after they catch the ball and we knew now they now have a new believer in Brian Mitchell number 36 quickly falls can't stay with Jerry Rice but alertly makes a comeback here watch him knock this ball out Lucky for the 49ers, that ball went out of bounds because Mitchell made a very heads-up play and was trying to knock that thing forward and not out. Four catches for 103 yards and a touchdown today for Jerry Rice. On first down, Young, with time, decides to take it. And takes it inside the 25 for a seven-yard gain for Steve Young. Six rushes for 39 yards on the afternoon for Young. The stadium by the bay, Candlestick Park, 66,000 strong here. 
James Brown along with Randy Cross, the 49ers trailing by a touchdown to the Falcons, 7-10 remaining in the third period of play. There's Dion, seems to be down a little bit, maybe a little heat, maybe a little exhaustion from that long run. Second and three from the 25, Carter. He'll make that complete from Young to Jamie Williams. Well, it wasn't only my eyes trying to play the part of cameraman. Steve Young did a nice job. 15-yard pass completion to Jamie Williams. They've used Jamie Williams extensively today. Here he comes right off here off the tight end position. And he goes along. He's going the same way as the quarterback. Watch the fake. Everything goes right with, with Young. And watch Jamie Williams. He's come across the middle of the field, right in that area of the zone between the defensive backs and the linebackers. And Steve Young lobs that thing right into him. Well, we can't go for the fake to the running back, can we? <laughs> First and goal. Ball at the 10. 6.09 left in the third. Young with time. Throws it incomplete. The intended receiver was John Taylor. Tim McKayer and Tracy Eaton were the cover people. That was a play that was meant to be a timing type route. It was a one, two, three, four, five, get back there and throw that pass right now. Good coverage by the Atlanta Falcons. They had everything covered on the outside. He took the receivers completely out of Steve Young's focus. Jerry Glanville obviously expressing his opinion on Mitchell's tackling, tackling ability on the previous play, or two plays ago. Second and goal. Tom Rappin, Harry Sidney, the backs. And Young throwing in the direction of John Taylor and Jamie Williams, but there is a flag on the play. I think it's going to be holding on Evers working against John Taylor. A little push. And while McElwee sorts it out, Mo Gardner, the talented rookie for Atlanta, still down on the field, grabbing behind that right knee and a little earlier. Holding number 27 defense, half the distance, automatic first step. A little earlier, Robert Lyles went off with a sprained right knee. He may try to return. And here they are right here, John Taylor and Evers working against each other. Watch Evers at the very end is what you need to watch him grab, right there. See him grab the jersey on John Taylor's jersey and arm, and that's what the official saw. And not only is Jerry Glanville looking at that, but he's looking at this. Mo Gardner, the very talented rookie out of Illinois, Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year last season. Just a super individual that you and I got to know. Max, as a matter of fact, the first ball game of the year when they played the Chiefs. He's one of the few guys you talk to, not that there's a lot of bad guys in football, but one of the few guys you sit there and spend about 25, 30 minutes talking to, you go, this guy can't be a football player. He can't have that mean streak in him. There's, mm -hmm. I mean, there's no ugly in this guy. This guy is just all nice. <laughs> not particularly big, but very fast and effective. Very undersized for an NFL nose guard at 6'2", 265. But in Jerry Glanville's attacking, slashing defense, He's the perfect style of nose guard. Torrey Epps last year was the same style of nose guard. Tony Casillas, before those two guys, was the perfect nose guard for this defense, but he got in a little bit of a doghouse with contract disputes and asking to be traded. Well, that's an understatement. A little bit of a doghouse, huh? Well, I'd say it was a master suite of a doghouse, but he was in the doghouse. Master suite. The problem with Jerry Glanville's doghouse dog is I don't know if it has doors. Once you get in there, you ain't getting out. Well, a good sign seeing Mo Gardner walk off under his own power as you take a look at George Seifert. Maybe a blessing in disguise that Seifert's team is playing here at Candlestick. The squad 0-3 on the road this season. And the Niners with Steve Young love to go to that little fade in the corners with the wide receivers, specifically Jerry Rice out on the right side. First and goal from the five. Sydney. Ten yard 
face mask, 58 defense. The touchdown is good. The 15-yard penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. That was against Jesse Tuggle. And here, Harry Sidney's going to come right at you. You want to see a little contact? Watch Guy McIntyre blocking. Watch Taylor blocking in front of him, but watch the contact right here at the end. Harry Sidney will not be denied, and Tuggle has to go all the way to the face mask, yanking it right there to try to pull him down, but it's too late. He's already in the end zone. Second rushing touchdown of the season for Harry Sidney as Mike Kofer comes on to attempt the point after. And it's good. And there is a flag on the play. It's against Atlanta, so the point after stands, and we've got a tie ball game at 27 apiece. Lots of men have heard about Rogaine, but lots of men don't know that only Rogaine has minoxidil, and only your doctor has Rogaine. For more information, call this number now. If you want to get the complete story about Rogaine with minoxidil, what it does and how it does it. See your doctor or call 1-800-274-8270. Upjohn Information Center. That's 1-800-274-8270. The Allstate agent who helps insure your home can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. Allstate life. Financial strength you can count on. It took all day. But they finally came up with one very big idea. What do you bet they printed on a laser jet from Hewlett Packard? You could hitch a ride on a comet. You could body surf a landslide. You could hang glide from an eagle. You could book a flight on a lightning bolt. Or you could drive the 1992 Toyota 4x4 and get it all. You're watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League. It'll be Baseball 91 with Pat O'Brien first at 8 o'clock tonight here on CBS, and that'll be followed by Game 4 of the National League Championship Series, the Pirates and the Braves right here on CBS. Toronto, Toronto leading that game right now up there in Toronto, 5-2 to two in the sixth inning. And maybe Cito Gaston getting kicked out of the game. Got those Toronto Blue Jays a little fired up. Any trick will do. 27 apiece here in San Francisco. A nine-play drive covering 69 yards. And a Harry Sidney five-yard run took 521 off the clock. And San Francisco with an extra bonus kicking off from the 50. And that's because they called that a flagrant face mask against Jesse Tuggle. Instead of five yards for incidental, it was 15 for the flagrant. So they'll be kicking from the 50. And you're looking at Mike Pritchard, the rookie out of Colorado, back to receive this Mike Kofer kickoff. That's because Deion Sanders out on the sidelines. Randy, maybe the point that you made at the top. The heat taking a lot out of these players on the field. It would seem it really is. A couple of these guys have been cramping on the ground. But let's keep an eye on this stat right now in the third quarter. San Francisco, total yards, 139. Atlanta, none. And speaking of none, there will be none on this return. So the Falcons will operate from their own 20. And you saw Dion earlier lying on the ground, suffering from cramps. And that from a guy who wants to play offense in a meaningful way as well as defense. Well, it looked like he was styling at the end of that touchdown run of his on the kickoff. Maybe he was just cramping. <laughs> a cramp run. And believe it or not, this is the first offensive possession of the second half for the Falcons, operating from their own 20. Look for Chris Miller and the Falcons to stay with this red gun, getting it out to the wide receivers. Come 
complete to Pritchard for the first down across the 30. And the ball is down by contact. So the play stands. A 15-yard pass play from Miller to Pritchard. Boy, you know, listening to Michael Haynes and the guy say, well, you know, Pritchard is getting there. Randy, if he ever gets there, he's going to be some kind of receiver. Well, that says a lot about this stable of wide receivers that Gary Glanville's put, put together here in Atlanta. He left a great one in Houston, and he's building a great one here in Atlanta. Watch it. What? Look at Miller. See the way he gunned that thing? He had Michael Haynes open right in front of Pritchard, but he decided to gun it, look, get it a little extra juice to get it to Pritchard, who was about 10 yards further downfield. First and 10. Chafee, the ball carrier, and he scoots ahead for about two. And that's just bring up a second and eight. That's just a little of them, a little bit of them get, trying to keep him honest. They've been running Pegram on that draw earlier in the first half. Got Chafee in now. They'll change the pace, but look for Jerry Glanville to keep doing that. If the Niners want to tee off and come after the passer, you'll see more of those draws and quick hitting runs. Take a look at Pat Chafee. Second and eight. Rozier, the back. for the first down forward progress of Andre Risen and Risen going at it with Merton Hanks and there is a flag down by the ball I don't know whether it just slipped out of the official's pocket now that was thrown with deliberate uh -huh. intent okay no the thing was there, fired huh? right in there because they started fighting as soon as that play was over and this is going to go against five yard face mask pal number 40 defense and force from the end of the run and that's against Johnny Jackson the third year player out of Houston There's Jackson, number 40, and look at him coming in right here, number 40, coming in at the end of this play. And watch where he gets the face mask, right in there. Ooh, he's just kind of leveraging his head up, trying to make that tackle. He's kind of lucky they called that an incidental contact. He must have grabbed it and immediately released his hand. Call that an intentional slip of the flag, huh? Yeah. <laughs> From the 48, 3.48, left in the third. Run! And Rozier, inside of the 45, four yards picked up on a play, tackled by Bill Romanowski. So far, Atlanta on this little drive is showing a lot of poise and a lot of style. They're not panicking. They're not in a situation now where they really have to panic or start pressing. And there's Tim McKyra talking about, too. Here's another guy from Atlanta who wants to play offense. Everybody on defense wants to play offense. An unusual shot of him standing there quietly. Second and six from the 44. Come on, Mark. Come at you, Mark. And Miller throwing it to Haynes for the first down. Michael Haynes, 10-yard pass play from Miller. Mark Lee, the cover man. Mark Lee was the man they were going after the whole time. They're really taking advantage of spreading this defense out. They've done it. They've been doing it all day long, and this is their first possession of the second half to get an opportunity to, and they're doing the exact same things they did in the first half that worked. They're doing it again in the second half. Randy and I go back to the top of the show. We talked about what Chris Miller felt Glanville had to let him do. Miller doing the job. He says, let me throw it. He's let him throw it 23 times. He's completed 15 for 207 yards and two touchdowns. Broussard, the lone back. Going up top, looking for Ryzen. And nearly caught in a surface attempt, being touched and bobbled by a couple of players. Todd Bowles, one of them. Merton Hanks, the other. And Andre Ryzen still kept an eye on it, but couldn't come up with the catch. Chris Miller was a little kicked there on that play. Came up limping a little bit after that blitz because they were coming after the quarterback. If Chris Miller had had a little bit more time to throw this to an exact spot, Instead of just throwing this up, he might have had Ryzen. But watch this volleyball effort. One, two, three, four, five, six. See, seven hands and two helmets, but the ball couldn't be caught. <laughs> Look at Miller. Watch the body language. Yes, no, yes, no, yes. Oh. Second and ten. Rassar. And 
Niners there. Very, very poor tackling by San Francisco. Broussard kept those legs churning. The line got him the first two or three. Broussard got the rest by himself. And this will be a close measurement here. As we take a look at the baseball action, top of the sixth inning, Toronto on top, five to two. comes away with the first down. Go ahead, Randy. Jerry Glanville, I think, right now has got to be looking into the end zone. Getting one of his wide receivers into the end zone around the goal post area, bringing him in over the middle. It's an area that's been open so far today, and they haven't exploited it since the first quarter. 136 left in a third. First and 10 from the 24. Steve Broussard, the lone back. Complete intended for Sean Collins. And Kevin Lewis right there step for step with him. Coming into this game, I think the average fan would have looked at this game and said, well, if Atlanta wants to throw the ball, God, they're going to have to deal with Charles Haley and Tim Harris, two big, well-known uh, pass rushers. Well, Chris Hinton and Mike Ken have effectively, effectively neutralized both these guys. The Niners have had to resort to blitzes. They've had to resort to stunts. The tackles for the Falcons have taken two all-pros out of the game so far here today. And Timmy Harris has been sucking in today trying to get back in football shape. Second and ten. Go, 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 go. Steve Broussard, first down. Out of bounds at about the one. A 23-yard jaunt by Steve Broussard, run out of bounds by Johnny Jackson. Two carries, 33 yards. And right about the time we said, watch out, they're going to keep running these quick-hitting draws. They're going to keep running these quick-hitting runs with Broussard and Pegram and company. Tim Harris, 92, gets sealed inside by Mike Ken. Nice block. And then it's just arm tackling and grasping by the 49ers. Just pathetic tackling. Broussard didn't get knocked out. He just ran out of field. First and goal from the one. 48 seconds left in the third period of play. Miller. Touchdown, Atlanta. Andre Risen. And boy, has Risen broken out in a big way today. Risen putting the moves on Merton Hanks, the rookie out of Iowa. Quick hitting play. Remember that the ball's caught. It only has to break the plane right there. He's right on the goal line. Hanks just could not get there. It wasn't Hanks' fault. That was good defensive play. Just a perfectly designed play and nice pass by Miller. And the snap is bobbled. And Atlanta will not convert the point after as Scott Fulhag, the holder, couldn't handle the snap at all. Well, if San Francisco's blocked extra point was a big play, that is a huge play by Atlanta, who now goes out only by six points. Let's take one more look at it. Andre Risen, you've done your job. It's the rest of those guys on special teams that have not done it. Watch the snap here. Coming for the center, Bingham. It was low and away. That's got to go to the center. Kind of hurts me to say that. We haven't been a performer snapper, mm -hmm. but when the center puts the ball down low away like that by the holder's knee, mm -hmm. and the holder's got to make a great athletic effort to pick that thing up, and Fulhag just couldn't pull it off. Routine things that you take for granted, but it's the little things that can make a big difference. So Andre Risen, one yard pass play from Chris Miller, and the Falcons on top, 33 to 27. 42 seconds left in the third period of play. As you take a look at the scoring drive, 10 plays, 80 yards, 5-13 off of the clock, culminating in the pass from Miller to Risen. Well, it took them almost nine minutes to finally get their hands on the ball. Deion Sanders returned that 
returned that one kickoff and ran 17 seconds off the clock. They didn't have any offense in the third quarter when they finally did get their offense on the field. They were patient, they were effective, and they were deadly getting their touchdown. Johnson with a high but short boot, and Carter from the 10. And Carter slipping and sliding. Excellent return by Dexter Carter, finally tackled by Ken Tippett. Up to about the 49-yard line. Let's watch Dexter do it. The hole is going to open up on the left-hand side, right there. They've started to cross. Dexter Carter sees it. The hole is, look at the size of that thing. Spencer Tillman's right out there in front of him, 23. Carter needed one more block. One more block, and that's six points the other way. A 39-yard return by Dexter Carter out of Florida State. Not to be outdone by the other Florida State alum, Deion Sanders. First and 10, San Francisco. Young. And Young has taken some hits today. A couple applied by that man there, Jesse Tuggle, number 58. A hard four yards gain by Young. Steve Young is starting to remind me of a big, strong-arm quarterback I grew up watching. He used to play for the Chicago Bears, Bobby Douglas. He could throw it forever. He was accurate. He loved to run. He liked to take hits. But that takes a physical toll. Seven carries for 42 yards, but he's paid for every foot of it. And that's the end of the third quarter with the score. Falcons, 33, 49ers, 27. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. This is CBS. here at the start of the fourth quarter. Atlanta leading 33-27, and Deion Sanders still trying to walk off some of those cramps. And the Atlanta defense has been cramping a bit lately today, too. With the last five possessions of the Niners, they've gotten 27 points of the last five possessions. Second and six. Young drills it complete to Taylor. A big first down for San Francisco. Taylor finally stopped by Jesse Tuggle. And Mike Holmgren up in the box, he knows Deion Sanders is on the sideline with cramps, and he's going to take advantage trying to get Jerry Rice and John Taylor over there one-on-one. -on -one. Does he have a choice against going against Mitchell or going against Sanders? That choice isn't even close. And Atlanta now is in a zone, and San Francisco is accurately trying to bring the receivers in, in between the gaps in that zone. Ball at the 26 of Atlanta, first and 10 for San Francisco. Start of the fourth quarter. 49ers trailing by six. Sydney. And Sydney, gang tackle, a gain of a yard. 
Randy, you know Sidney well. He had actually been clamoring to run the ball more, saying that if he got an opportunity, he could deliver. Well, he's a great perseverance story in the NFL. You know, Harry was originally a quarterback at the University of Kansas running the wishbone. Come to the 49ers. He's a special teams guy. He's a guy that, kind of like the Niners, used to use Bill Ring. If you needed a possession carry, you gave it to Harry Sidney. Now with Roger Craig spending his time down in Los Angeles with the Raiders, it's been a great opportunity for Harry Sidney to carry the ball. Second and nine, Carter in motion. And Young to Raffman. And Raffman tackled quickly by Tuggle, but a pickup of five on a play. So that will bring up a third and four. You know, we talked about the tackles from Atlanta doing a good job. Steve Wallace, number 74, the big guy out of the University of Auburn, or Auburn University, has been having a great season this year. Look at him working against Tim Green. That's a mismatch. 245-pound end going against a 280-pound tackle. He's only done this against Pro Bowl players. No sacks this year for anybody going against Steve Wallace. He's having a great year. He's had a few offsides. The papers have been after him. As far as 1991 for Steve Wallace, it's been a great success. Third and four for San Francisco, and it's Young. Trying to get to the first down marker. He does. You'll have a penalty there for that tackle up around the head. Somebody put a little necktie on Steve Young and the official caught it. Flag was thrown out of bounds there. Eight carries, 47 yards for Steve Young. Half the distance, first down. Well, not only Steve Young losing his hat today, Bob McAdoo, a little difficult to keep in his own. Is that what you can say that the official empathizes with the quarterback? Quarterback gets hit around the head and the ref loses his hat. Right here, look at Scott Case. Oof, look at that. I tell you, Steve Young is going to, the heck with a hot tub, the heck with an ice bath. He needs to just go out and lay in the bay for his day <laughs> off. He is going to be sore. If I was him, though, I think I might want to look into a little tighter helmet. So Scott Case put that form across his face mask, and the helmet came down around his nose. Jordan hit him earlier in the game, and the helmet pops off. Never hurts to protect your spear head, Steve. First and goal, ball at the 7, 12-20 left in the game. San Francisco trailing by 6. Young. Incomplete. Good defensive play that time by Tim McKayer. Tim McKayer was very fortunate there that Steve Young threw that ball behind John Taylor. It was just like Andre Risen before on the Falcons touchdown. John Taylor runs a perfect pattern. If the ball is on time, there's nothing Tim McKayer can do about this. But watch, this ball is thrown back behind John Taylor. He's got to slow down and reach, and he can't make the catch, and Tim McKayer can knock it down. Tim McKayer's partner in crime, Deion Sanders, limping on the sidelines as you see him getting a little attention there. Obviously holding those calves. He's still cramping up down below. Second and goal. Ball at the seven. Young. Incomplete. The intended receiver was Jamie Williams, covered by the inside backer, Jesse Tuggle. And that's something Jesse Tuggle does very effectively. He's a guy, he doesn't come out for the Atlanta Falcons. When they go to nickel, he stays in. He's their linebacker. He can run with tight ends. He can run with most, half, most halfbacks and fullbacks. And Jerry Glanville loves this guy. This defense is specially suited for this Jesse Tuggle size. You see that 5'11", 245 pounds. The way they slash and run and just sprint to the ball, he almost gets lost behind defensive linemen, and linemen have a hard time picking him up. Consequently, last year he made 201 tackles. Third and goal. Young. Dies for the touchdown, San Francisco. quarterback diving like that and flipping and spinning and landing on your head now the quarterback gets up but the defensive backs and the linebackers are still on the ground this play was designed to be a quick pass Steve Young is getting pressure on the outside right there by Darian Connor and now it's Air Young 
Takes off from the three and a half. We'll give him the three and a half yard line there. Goes about a 10, 11 foot dive, head first, right into the end zone. One more time, you see Steve Young will be diving right into your laps here at home. He has no intention of diving down, folks. He's diving up. A 5.0 for degree of difficulty, but a 10.0 for guts and heart by Steve Young. And the crowd here in Candlestick is chanting Steve. So Kofer will attempt to put the 49ers up by one at point afters have not been an easy proposition today. And this one is good. So the 49ers go up for the first time today, leading at 34-33. Wouldn't it be great if you invented magic recliners that took you anywhere? So you guys took a trip to the Keys for some boating, volleyball, and a little snorkeling. And wouldn't it be great if just by pushing a button you got beer? Really great premium beer like Keystone. What's this button do? No, 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 no. Cold filtered Keystone and Keystone Light. Bottle beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Whoops. Our competition uses a very sophisticated, state-of-the-art, highly precise device to measure their cars. Our car, the Accord from Honda. The temperature never drops below Xerox. That's important to remember at a time like this, when it's very dark and very cold. Ah, you did remember Xerox Antifreeze. The temperature never drops below Xerox. I smoke, but the only open table in this restaurant mm -hmm. is in the no smoking section. My solution? The cool, clean taste of Wrigley Spearmint Gum. After dinner, it fills the bill. When I can't smoke, I enjoy pure chewing satisfaction. This game summary is sponsored by Keystone. Well, I tell you, the sportscasters around the country will certainly have their pick of highlights. Go with John Taylor, 54-yard touchdown. Jerry Rice, Deion Sanders, a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown. Missed point afters. But, Randy, at this point of the game, 12.05 left in the contest. Let's talk about Steve Young, and maybe he did tell us the truth earlier this week. We talked to him Friday. He said, I didn't want a week off. I wanted to play another game. I didn't play good against the Ra Raiders. I got to make something happen. He's trying to kill himself, but he's making plenty of things happen. <laughs> Two touchdown passes. Two touchdowns rushing. Right now, he is the 49er attack. And Kofer with a high short one. Taken at the 14. And Pritchard, there is a flag on the play as Pritchard gets it up to about the 37. But there is a flag in the middle of the field. And it will go against Atlanta. And while they march it off, let's march back east to Greg Gumbel. Holding. All right, JB, in Toronto. Game five, Chuck Knobloch, the rookie second baseman for the Minnesota Twins with a two-base hit down the right field line. Mike Pagliarulo scores from second. Dan Gladden all the way from first. Three runs in the sixth for the Twins. They tie it at five. The Blue Jays now batting bottom of the sixth. JB? All right, Greg, I'd say that there's an exciting ball game going on up in Toronto, and certainly the same can be said right here. Jerry Glanville, he may want to be a fan watching this one. Yeah, but they've only got 10 points in Toronto. We've got 67 here. <laughs> Ours is much more exciting. <laughs> First and 10. Rassar. First down. the 40 of San Francisco tackled by Johnny Jackson a 36 yard run by Steve Broussard the second year back out of Washington State he's got three carries for 69 yards on the afternoon George Seifert defenses have always prided themselves in pursuit and in tackling you're gonna see no examples of either one of those here on this replay we're gonna see from the end zone 
Watch Broussard. Things are stuffed up in the middle. So he bounces out. Where's the pursuit? There is no pursuit. Getting good downfield blocks right there. Nice block by Andre Risen helping him out. And Jackson has to come all the way back from the other side to make the tackle. From the 39, first and 10. 11 minutes left in the contest. And it's Broussard again. And the shifty one has the second first down. So the young man from South Central Los Angeles coming back to the West Coast and running well. That one, an 11-yard scamper. Well, he's a guy that last year as a rookie put the ball on the ground a couple times and run, wasn't running as hard as Jerry Glanville wanted him to. And as a result, it affected his appearances in the game. He didn't really get to carry the ball very often. This year, he's running harder, he's running smarter, and as we're seeing today, he's got that almost Barry Sanderish ability to run up into a hole, spot an opening outside, and dart sideways. As you see his carries, four for 80, that's a heck of an average. Ball placed at the 29 of San Francisco, and this is Broussard for a third straight time, and he gets down to about the 25, a four-yard run by Steve Broussard. We'll call it three. There's Ryzen limping off the field, or not limping back to the huddle. Perhaps suffering from a little bit of those same cramps that are affecting his buddy Deion Sanders on the sideline. As Ryzen heads off, 10 minutes left in the contest. He's had a big game. Not only is he catching passes, he's been blocking downfield very well for his other receivers and for the running backs on the run. Second and seven, number 25. Rozier, the lone back. And Miller gets rid of it just in time as Hanks, with the corner blitz, put all kinds of pressure on him. Merton Hanks will be coming right in front of us here as his blitz. Look at that, right there. Here comes 36, right at the back of Chris Miller. You wonder why quarterbacks sometimes flinch a little bit. It's just thinking about guys getting free shots on their spines like that. And it was fortunate for the 49ers that Miller didn't step up further and completely avoid that rush because it looked like he was going to get Pritchard opened over the middle. Broussard back in. Third and seven. So both squads with two timeouts remaining. With the highest resale value in its class and proven Honda reliability, the Accord is a safe place to put your money. Recently, this couple walked out of Little Caesars with extra pepperoni and extra cheese without paying for it. It's lots of lots of two pizzas with extra pepperoni and extra cheese for $8.98. So why pay $8.99 for one pizza when you can get two for $8.98 at Little Caesars? It's like getting one pizza free. Pizza, pizza. There's a difference when you're flying. Where are we going today? I'm going to Grandma's house. There's someone who shows how much Let's they go care. Away. I'm not going to go anywhere without you. A smile, a tone of voice, and a willingness to try. When you love to fly, it shows. Delta A driver's side airbag is now standard on every new Accord, Civic, and Prelude. But remember, it's most effective when you wear your seatbelt. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Honda, who puts a driver's airbag on every new Accord, Civic, and Prelude. Allstate, for home, auto, life, and business insurance, you're in good hands with Allstate. And by Keystone and Keystone Life, bottle beer taste in a can. Wouldn't that be great? Sights from Fisherman's Wharf here in San Francisco. Meanwhile, back inside here at Candlestick Park, a dandy of a ball game, third and 
seven. Keep an eye on Pritchard and Rising. Option to Broussard. And Broussard is not going to make it. Excellent job by San Francisco defense led by Pierce Holt. You're challenging a defense at its strength. This defense we discussed earlier can pursue and it can tackle. You've been hitting him with this quick stuff up the middle and you've been gashing him for big yards. What do you do? Well, of course, you run an option out here to the right. I mean, last time Chris Miller ran, that was against Washington State when he was at Oregon. 49ers were not fooled at all by that play. Boy, I really got to really second guess that. They should have thrown that ball in the air against a defense that's given up plenty of yards past. This will be a 44-yard field goal attempt by Norm Johnson. It's up, and it's good. It's all right, it's all right. Norm Johnson doing the job today as he boots the Falcons back in front. Working to be the best they can be. <laughs> Teammates sponsored by the U.S. Army. When the 49ers take the field for the big games, they field two exceptional big game receivers. Jerry Rice has 12 postseason TDs, including three in Super Bowl 24. John Taylor caught the game winner in Super Bowl 23. In the past two years, Rice and Taylor have combined for an amazing 47 scores. Individually, each can make the big play. Together as teammates, they make the 49ers the best they can be. Most of my friends don't know what they're going to do after graduation, but I've already locked in guaranteed skill training in the Army. Qualify now and you can reserve even the Army's most sought-after technical training, up to 12 months in advance, through the Army's delayed entry program. Sure, being a soldier won't be easy, but then nothing worth having ever is. It was engineered to a higher standard with one of the world's most advanced suspension systems. It is nearly invisible to the wind. When it was built, it became an instant classic. The Accord Coupe from Honda. Everything else is just water under the bridge. Randy, I think you're right. Jerry Glanville will remember Norm Johnson's name after today. That a 44-yard field goal, his longest of the season, and that puts the Falcons on top by two. You talk about lack of scoring in the NFL this year. Look at some of the scores we've had today. And this one here is like arena football. I mean, the team that has the ball last wins, kind of like your argument. If you're the last guy at the board with the chalk, you win the argument. 34 by Minnesota. 42 by Buffalo. They should have done that in a half. Maybe it's all from Buffalo. And Norm Johnson with the kickoff here. So the Kansas City Chiefs score put a severe spanking on their second allegedly real good AFC East team in Miami. Good kickoff return coverage that time by Atlanta. Remember to join us tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time for Baseball 91 with Pat O'Brien and Tommy Lasorda. And that, of course, will be followed by Game 4. National League Championship Series, the Atlanta Braves hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates. And, of course, tomorrow's Game 5 can be seen at 3 o'clock Eastern time. All the postseason action right here on CBS. San Francisco starting from its own 16, 838. Left in the game, first and 10 out of the pro set. This is Rice in motion. And Young again. And gets up near the first down marker, a nine yard scamper by Steve Young. Tackled by Jesse Tuggle. That's 10 carries on the day. 10 carries for Steve Young for 64 yards. How effective has he been running? The rest of the runners I mean, you can call the wide receivers runners, you can call the backs runners, you can call Steve Bono, the other quarterback runners. They've managed 29 yards. Man. So Steve Young on pretty much undesigned plays. Most of his, his runs have been improv. This will be close enough for a measurement. And it's going to be a few inches shy. An interesting notes for the San Francisco 49er fans out there. The 36 points given up by the 49ers today is the most points this franchise has given up since 1980. Mm -hmm. Second.
second and inches. Ball at the 25. Rick Bryan on the tackle. You know, speaking of Tom Rathman, Randy, you had mentioned before, quite candidly, that you thought that Rathman should be utilized a bit more in the offense. Do you still feel that way? Well, you know, Rathman two years ago caught 73 passes coming out of the backfield. And a lot of people say, well, heck, he was the only back working. Harry Sidney was hurt or whatnot. If you have a guy that's this effective, he's a great lead blocker. He runs the ball very well, and what he really does well is catches the ball out of the backfield. He's the most effective non-halfback type guy, I think, in the league catching the ball. He really runs and runs over people. Rathman, the lone back, first and ten. Complete to Taylor. And Taylor ducks and slides. Six yards gained on the play. Top of the seventh inning. Still five all up in Toronto. And remember, Minnesota leading this series three games to one. If they win it, they wrap it up. Boy, the Blue Jays battling back. Just take a look at Tim Harris and Bill Romanowski. Tim Harris, an inauspicious start here in San Francisco, arrested for driving under the influence last evening. And he may very well have a date with the commissioner. This would be his second offense and a possible four-game suspension. And both defenses have spent the whole day on roller skates going backwards. Let's keep an eye on Jerry Rice on this play. And Jerry Rice, what McKire didn't do well was to keep a good eye on him. As Rice gets the first down. Jerry Ross, uh, Rice out of the slot inside working against Tim McKire. This is just pure move and speed. The receiver knows where he's going, and by the time the defender turns around and sees where the ball is, there's nothing he can do about it. First and 10 from the 43, 6.09 left in the game. Jerry Rice. The United is trailing by two. Jerry Rice can quietly have a career day for an average guy and make it look very simple. Young, with time, throws an incomplete intended receiver was the tight end, Jamie Williams. And speaking of the tight end, a pass-catching tight end, Brent Jones, of course, not in the lineup. If there's one guy that the 49ers really miss besides Joe Montana on this team, it's Brent Jones. Brent Jones brought that extra dimension to the 49er offense with his speed and ability to come out of the tight end position and get deep down the field. We've seen Jamie Williams today. We've seen Wesley Walls on other tapes and other games get in the 5 to 10 to 15 yard category with their catches for an off from the tight end position. Brent Jones has the ability to stretch a defense 20, 25, 30 yards down the field. Second and 10, three wide outs in for the 49ers. What a catch! Great catch by Mike Sherrard. Ball thrown behind him, and there's a late flag. A little roughhouse tactics taking place on the field, but what a great catch by Mike Sherrard. And this will go against the Falcons. Personal foul. Here's Sherrard working right here. Watch him come across the screen and catch this, ca catch this pass. What concentration. You talk about hand-eye coordination. Say, you know, kids play a lot of Nintendo nowadays. It develops their hand-eye coordination. Nintendo can't give you that kind of hand-eye coordination. You're born with that. Mm -hmm. And while we were away there doing that replay, they've assessed the penalty, added another 15 yards onto mm -hmm. that last play by Sherrard. Therefore, the ball will be marked at the 35. We talked about Brent Jones. There he is. Suffering from a knee sprain he suffered a couple weeks ago. He should be back. You know, he says, I'll be back for the Philadelphia game in a couple weeks. You're probably looking at about the Atlanta game, which is down the road. Just one more week extra. San Francisco with 398 total yards. First and 10. Ball at the 35 of Atlanta. And this is Henderson. And Henderson, forward progress, about four yards. 5-10 left in the game. San Francisco trailing Atlanta, 36-34. Along with Randy Cross, I'm James Brown here at Candlestick Park. Both of these teams, record of two and three, chasing 
the unbeaten New Orleans Saints. Under a normal circumstance, James, you'd be saying, okay, they're already within Mike Kofor's field goal range. They're inside of 50 yards, but remember where the ball is on the field. You're in this dirt surface. Now, you don't want to kick out of the dirt, which means you have to get the ball all the way down to about the 15-yard line to keep it off the dirt and give your kicker a fair chance. Second and six. And Young, going back to his third read of Jamie Williams, throws it incomplete as the heat was on, and Robert Lyles is back in the lineup for the Falcons. Steve Young's doing it all today. He's running the ball, he's throwing passes, he's making good decisions, throwing the balls away. He ran over there across the field trying to help that poor official. He figured the guy was having a little bit of a hard time. He was going to help him call a penalty on that last play. And Steve Young so far today, 19 of 30 for 303 yards. And that also includes two touchdowns that he's thrown to George Seifert. George, six tight ends in. Make that six defensive backs. Boy, that would be a novelty. You got a scoop. Third and six, and it's complete for the first down. Rice. And what the Niners have done with this ball, this ball this time in this quarter, has they have used the pass as their run. They have not gone down the field on every play. They've gone short and they've gone inside on the defensive back of the Atlanta Falcons, who are now predominantly zoning the receivers. You see Case, that was Case's position to be in there and try to disrupt that pass, but Young got it to Rice well before Case could get there. Six catches, 124 yards on the day for Jerry Rice, and San Francisco continuing to chew up time on that clock. 3.42 remaining in the game. On the ground, Sidney. Sidney met head on by Tuggle and he breaks the tackles. And Scott Case finally tackles him from behind and a loss of nine on the play. That was a dumb move by Harry Sidney right there. He gave up nine yards, but more importantly, he took the 49ers completely out of the dirt or in, put them into the dirt area. Watch this. Jesse Tuggle on a nice scrape. He be, would have been better off going down right there instead of keeping on fighting like this, and he gives up an extra four or five yards downfield. But he's put the 49ers into the infield area and given the advantage right now to the Atlanta defense. You mentioned that none of the players like to play on that dirt because Tuggle himself was sliding on the dirt trying to make the grab. You just don't get the traction. Imagine trying to kick off that stuff. Mike Cofer and Norm Johnson, I imagine, would hate to do it off this today. On second and 19. And Young not getting away from Tory Epps. And this may be intentional grounding. There's no doubt about it. He was doing that to avoid a sack. So two poor decisions in a row by the 49ers. First by Sidney, and now by Steve Young. And the additional hurt on this will be the loss of Dale. Intentional grounding, number eight, 10-yard penalty, and the down also. Lose the down. And pushes the ball back to the 39-yard line and takes them out of field goal range. One more time, we'll take a look at this. Steve has made things happen today by scrambling, by moving. He avoids a sack right there by Darian Connor. He's being tackled around the legs by Epps. But there is not a receiver anywhere close. And the rule book states that if a quarterback throws the ball away specifically to avoid a sack, it is intentional grounding. And the net result, a third and 29. Ball marked at the 39 of Atlanta. 2.38 left in the contest. They need at least 15 yards for a field goal. Intercepted by Tim McKayer. And McKayer hands off to Deion Sanders. And Sanders gets it up to the 35 of San Francisco. said before the game that even if Jerry Rice beat him for a touchdown, he would come back with a pick, an interception. We talked about a bad decision by Harry Sidney and a bad decision by Steve Young. Another bad decision by Steve Young because there are two, Mitchell and McKire, over there covering John Taylor. He never had a chance to get that thing to McKire. 
And Makaya figures he's surrounded. He gives the ball off to his buddy Sanders, and he can take it in. Maybe he forgot Sanders' this guy was cramping a little while ago. And here's the handoff one time, but remember, if not for Jamie Williams right here, it's touchdown the other way. But as it is, the Atlanta Falcons with 223 left in the game, and both teams holding two timeouts. It's their game to win at this point. They have to run the ball and run out the clock. And boy, has Steve Young done some awfully good things today, only to be negated by some bad decisions there. Tim McKayer, first return back to Candlestick, and he collects his second interception of the season. Broussard, the lone back, first and 10 from the 35 for Atlanta. And Broussard ahead for maybe two yards. We'll call it one. Dennis Brown and Pierce Holt on the stop. The Niners blow off one of their timeouts. They only have one left. But remember, at 2.15, the clock will stop again for a two-minute warning. So in reality, they have two timeouts left. And Tim McKayer, loving every minute of it, was greeted warmly, if you will, by the fans here in San Francisco with a round of boos when he was introduced. Well, they haven't forgot him. Tim's a very uh, unforgettable kind of a guy. And guess who doesn't like the fact that the other guy is gloating on the other side of the field? Jerry Rice. Rice what? refused to be baited into a, a talking contest with McKayer. That's the least the least of the 49ers' problems right now are what is what Jim the Tim McKayer and the Atlanta Falcons team is doing over on the sideline. A good team, a great team, a team that should be a playoff team, gets a turnover here and gets the ball back to their offense. Second and nine. Rosar, the back. The ball carrier. First down. And a lot more by Steve Broussard. Run out of bounds by Don Griffin. 2.06 left and Broussard. 23 carries. Or make that 23 yards on that particular run. He's got 105 yards today. And he's the first, first ball carrier in 36 consecutive games. 40 if you count playoffs. That have rushed for 100 yards against the 49er defense. That was the longest streak in the NFL. It was just snapped by Broussard, and that might have been the frosting on the cake. This game is presented by authority of the National Football League, and the CBS telecast is intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast with express written consent of CBS, the 49ers and the National Football League is prohibited. And that's exactly what Charles Haley did to Steve Broussard, prohibited him from making any yardage on the play. And we're at the two-minute warning of the game. We'll be back after this. We sweat. The only protection for us? New Era Double X Sports Scent. It's the only leading sports solid that doesn't leave a white flaky mess. New Era Double X Sports Scent helps keep us extra, extra dry. The Allstate agent who helps insure your car can give you a hand with a plan for life insurance. Life insurance. Your Allstate agent wants to be your agent for life. You're in good hands with Allstate. Elvira here, back with a helping hand for Halloween. Coors Light, it's the official beer of Halloween. And just what an adult party needs to be a howling success. Oh. What? You don't believe me? What do you need, like a sign from above? Be sure to visit this display wherever you buy Coors Light. And it's just perfect for when friends drop in. See what I mean? It's the first beer. For those of you expecting to see 60 Minutes, you're watching the NFL on CBS in the game between the Atlanta Falcons and the San Francisco 49ers. 
Along with Randy Cross, I'm James Brown, and I'll score Atlanta 36, San Francisco 34. 60 minutes will be seen immediately following this game, except on the West Coast. And a field goal here keeps San Francisco in the game. A touchdown completely locks a victory for the Atlanta Falcons. Second and 11, and the Niners still have one more timeout left. Ball on the 12. Broussard. And Broussard runs it to the back of his own man. No gain on the play. And that is the final timeout for San Francisco. Coming up tonight on CBS, features 60 Minutes. What is Prozac, and why does it drive the Church of Scientology up the wall? It's an antidepressant that millions swear by. Should they? That's on 60 Minutes tonight. Also, we'll have Baseball 91 coming your way at 8 o'clock Eastern time. And, of course, that will be followed by the Braves and Pirates at 8.30 Eastern. Those of you on the East Coast will see 60 minutes before the game, while those on the West Coast will see it after the game. Today's game was produced by Bob Monsbach and directed by Kathy Barreto, associate producer Suzanne Smith, and Harry Wagner at the BA. The NFL today was produced by Eric Mann and directed by Duke Strzok. The senior producer of the NFL on CBS is Ed Gorin, and the executive producer is Ted Shaker. Can I give him cheer? Tim McCarr on the sideline declaring it's over. Sorry, Tim. It isn't over yet. Third and 11. Rozier, the lone back. Miller throwing for Pritchard. Incomplete. Covered by Don Griffin. If you're going to try a pass in that situation, with all the flow going one way, Miller comes back the other. You're looking for a big play. And Miller made a fine decision there. Seeing Christian was closely guarded, just threw that ball away out of bounds. So Norm Johnson will come on and attempt to move the Falcons out in front by the score of 39-34. This will be a 30-yard field goal. He's kicked one of 43 and 44 today. It's up, and it's good. Norm Johnson with three field goals, make it four on the afternoon. And the Falcons ahead 39-34. 1.45 left in the game, Randy Cross. Well, those of you that have been watching for a while, neither defense has done a very good or effective job in stopping the other offense. We've got a minute and 45 seconds left. If you're too overconfident at the mo moment, or you think like Tim McCarr, this is a locked victory, remember the end of the first half. 49ers got the ball back with around a minute and 45 seconds to go, with about 30 yards to go for a touchdown, and I believe it was a three or four play drive. They zapped it down the field, and they scored. So look for Atlanta to come out and keep playing tough. Don't look for them to go to a prevent defense. That's not their style. And the Niners are going to want to get the ball to John Taylor and Jerry Rice. too far you need to be in back of Spencer what really disrupted that play was Tracy Johnston and Fishback getting down as fast as they did Tillman didn't have any choice but to throw that when he did and Steve Young and company will start from the six yard line Steve's had 20 20 of 33 for 314 yards 
two touchdowns, but two big interceptions. And that's been the story of the early season for Steve Young. Impressive numbers, but the W column is where they're hurting. So Steve Young, as Randy mentioned, and the 49ers will open up at their own six with 139 left in a game and trailing by five to the Falcons. And Young dropped by Rick Bryant, sack number one in the game. Rick Bryant, the eighth-year player out of Oklahoma. And give credit for that to the Atlanta defensive backfield. Steve Young was getting good protection, but he couldn't find anybody open. That time he did, and it's complete to Jerry Rice. And Jerry Rice still in bounds about, oh, a half a yard shy. If there's any team in football today that knows how to run this drill, it's the 49ers. Young completes a Sanjay Beach for the first down. Ball at the 35 of San Francisco, under a minute to play. Atlanta with seven defensive backs in, trying to stop the Niners. No pass rush on Young. And nearly picked off by Deion Sanders. But the clock does stop. 43 seconds remaining. And a reminder that at the completion of this game, those of you expecting to see 60 minutes will see it in its entirety. It's second and 10. Atlanta is really bringing only one person. So far, it's been Tim Green, number 99, and Rick Bryan on occasion, but mainly Tim Green on the pass rush, getting no pressure on Steve Young. They're literally dropping nine people to 10 people back in the coverage. Second and 10 at the 35. 43 seconds left in the game. Young with all kinds of time. Trying to get out of bounds, and he's tackled inbounds. Brian Mitchell. Clock still ticking. He's got to run a play. He can't throw away the ball right here in this situation. He needs a real play. And on third and six, Young downs it. And San Francisco will have 19 seconds remaining. I, I completely disagree with that decision to throw that ball on the ground like that. You back yourself into fourth and seven. If you run a play in third down, it gives you an opportunity to at least get a play. Call a play, call an audible. You'll run an extra two seconds off the clock. But if that ball is incomplete, you still have a fourth down. If this ball is incomplete, the 49ers have lost. And Jerry Glanville hoping just for that outcome. So it's fourth and six. Ball at the 38. 19 seconds left. And then it's got enough people to double team everybody. And it's intercepted. And Tim McKayer with his second pick of the afternoon, third of the season. And that should be the ball game. And there's Tim McKayer was working against Jerry Rice once again on that play. And he who laughs last, laughs best. Good coverage downfield. Steve Young had no choice. He had to try to throw it up and make a play. Jerry Rice never had a chance. It was an easy pick for Tim McKire, and he gets to enjoy the spoils of the situation. The 49ers now drop to two and four. A hole right now as Atlanta just kind of falls on the ball to run out the clock. I think two and four is a hole that many here in the Bay Area will now declare too deep for them to crawl out of. Mm -hmm. And Chris Miller, again, told us before the players were most optimistic coming into this game. Welcome All to Tim McKire. McKire had a pregame forecast on game day. Tim McKire, late in the game, we're behind by three points. They picking on me all day. Rice caught me, beat me for a touchdown. I picked this one off. 
I'm high stepping down the sideline. I do the Deion Sanders high step, and we're in the end zone working it. Ooh. Yeah. Right. Yeah. What's it. up? <laughs> At Candlestick, what's up for the Niners? Steve Young was up. Rick Bryan knocks his helmet off. And the Niners behind 17 to nothing early. But they made it a 20 to 14 Atlanta lead. In the third quarter, Young to guess who? Jerry Rice. Blow past Tim McGuire. 57 yard touchdown. The PAT is no good. We're tied at 20. And when you watch this play, watch the subtlety as Jerry Rice make, makes the catch. He realizes McGuire's path is directly behind him. So once he makes the grab, he instinctively goes to his left to get the touchdown. Jimmy McGuire on the sideline watching. Grand time. Grand time. Grand time. High stepping at the midfield strike. Deion Sanders returns the kick for a touchdown 100 yards, 27 to 20 Atlanta. The Niners come back at the 33, 27 Atlanta lead. Look at Steve Young. He'll get some fans on his team that way. Diving into the end zone of the Niners lead at 34 to 33. Another look. He has never lacked guts. Watch him go for the end zone right there. Atlanta has gone ahead of Young and the Niners, 36, 34. The Niners driving. Young intended for John Taylor. But Tim McCoyer makes the pick. And then he will lateral it to Franchise. Prime time. The Falcons with a big defensive play. Now, it's a five-point Falcon lead with seconds to go. It's McKayer again. The Swami is handing his magic carpet to Tim McKayer. The man can predict football. And the Falcons with a big win, dropping the Niners. To Professor.